I mean, in any other culture, it would sound so bad. Like, we were broke, pretty much homeless, and we were having the time of our life. If I hit that two months where I'm gone for two months, like one Gabby Pahinui song, and I'm just bawling. I'm just like, I want to go home, bro. I just want to go home. So, I, you know, it's funny. As I used to tell people I did construction. If, if I was at a party and people were liquored up enough, my uncles would be like, boy, what you, like, what you been up to? I'd be like, oh, I just work construction with Uncle Dougie. He's like, Raj, I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk to. Him, try to explain my drunk uncle what an influencer is. Sam like, of all trades. Sam of all trades. But I'm also a five-time Emmy-winning <laughs> hey. storyteller. Burr, 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 Tell him, Jordan. <laughs> Clip it. Oh wow, I've never seen one in person. Is it? Real? Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. I literally bought it just to get that I reaction. <laughs> Delina Mai Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by climbing up coconut trees growing up and then climbing up their ranks and winning an Emmy when you grow up. I'm your host Kamaka and I can climb trees, but I don't know about winning Emmys like our awesome guest. But before we introduce him, I want to remind you to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash kamakadias if you want to support us for as little as $3 a month. If supporting us with money is not for you, but you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I read every single review because I appreciate it so much. Okay, let's introduce our guest. This podcast is brought to you by ID8 Studios, a four rent commercial soundstage at the Entrepreneur Sandbox here in the heart of Kaka'ako. Whether making a movie, commercial, music, photography, or a podcast, check out ID8 Studios for your next digital media production. And if you're a nonprofit, be sure to ask about ID8 community discounts. For more info on ID8 or to book the studio, visit ID8Studios.org. Our guest today is an Emmy award-winning executive producer, host, and director from the island of Kauai. This local boy is a captivating embodiment of Hawaii's aloha spirit. With an adventurous soul and deep-rooted love for the islands, he embraces the natural wonders and cultural richness of his homeland. Whether riding the waves or immersing himself in the vibrant local traditions around the world, his infectious charisma and warmth effortlessly connects people from all walks of life. His talent in front and behind the camera has earned him over a quarter million followers throughout his social media channels. Most recently, he was nominated for five Emmy Awards for his episode Coral Gardeners, which is a part of his series Back to the Wild, available now on YouTube. Oh, and he brought home all five Emmy Awards too. No big deal. Through his unwavering passion and genuine kindness, our guest invites us to experience the enchantment and beauty of Hawaii, leaving an indelible mark on those fortunate enough to cross his path. His name is Sam Potter. Aloha, Sam. Welcome to the podcast here at ID8 Studios. How are you doing? Wow. Clip it, Jordan. <laughs> Clip it. What an intro. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be honest. I uh, asked ChatGPT to help me out I was with that. about <laughs> to say... I almost just made that so like, did you chat PG? I thought that was going. So I, I always write out an intro for people. And um, I was listening to a podcast, uh, Joe Rogan. They were talking about AI and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, so I was just looking at chat GPT and I was like, write Sam Potter an introduction. And it gave me a super long one. And I was like, okay, write me an introduction about 100 words or less. Uh -huh. And they gave me that. Then I just kind of paraphrased it. And I thought it would be interesting to do that with yours because... Your series is called Back to the Wild, which is kind of like going, you know, back to the roots, you know, all natural. And ChatGPT is like the future. So I wanted to see, I wanted to get what your opinions on how you feel about like ChatGPT and AI. If you're not using it, use it. <laughs> no, you literally, you were like, it is funny how you can kind of tell though. Like yeah. you're going, I'm like, this guy's in on ChatGPT. 100%. I, don't use like I was like, there's no way. Words. There's a few. Indelible? Yeah. On. <laughs> Once you do like those three adjectives in a row, I'm like, nope, not a chance. <laughs> um, no, I think ChatGPT is something that I've just incorporated in my life and I'm really glad I did. Yeah. Um, it's such a good tool. Like, for example, Got these Emmys, don't have a publicist. ChatGPT, hey, how do I make a press release? Mm. Okay, bing, 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 bing. Formulate a press release in like, a, like I'll talk to ChatGPT just as a smarter version of me 
and just be like, hey, I'm trying to write this press release. These are my intentions. This is what I want to mention. Da, 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 and just like draw out a map for them, mm -hmm. let them write it, and then I'll go in and touch it up, send it. Perfect. That, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. It's genius. I gotta, I gotta start using it more. It's a time saver. It's <laughs> a time sure, saver. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm stoked that we can finally sit down and talk stories today. I don't even know how we first connected. Just I think on social media, and then I remember meeting meeting you at Ola Hilo. Yeah. A year ago or something. Um. But I I, I knew you through Kimmy and like my mm -hmm. sister in law, and just I've always heard good things about you. And then meeting you that one time, I was like. I got to talk stories with this guy. Yeah. Good, nope. good vibes, good energy. <laughs> I'm glad it finally happened because I've also been meaning to talk to you. I'm really, really stoked with what you guys got going on. I'm glad there's a platform like yours, one that you're doing it in such a, I don't even have the word for it, but just in a really good way. I can chat GPT it. Yeah, you can chat, <laughs> chat GPT. How do I compliment this man? Um, no, I just, I think you guys are very professional you understand how to market and you're you're doing everything very well but also your messaging is just super pono your guests your conversations it's very hawaii you're not trying to be anything that you're not it's just very authentic like you're the perfect guy to be doing that i'm wow. glad you're in this spot yeah i appreciate it. and i feel the same way about your videos that i see as well thank you so that's why i think it's gonna be a really good episode so before we get into everything i gotta start at the beginning where are you from where are you grad and what was it like growing up well i grew up on Kauai. um i graduated from Kauai high and as soon as i got out of there i was out of there i i i was never good at school um i tried really hard and I, I actually, I got pretty good grades, but it was never easy and I never enjoyed it. So I wasn't gonna go to college. I didn't wanna get bad grades because I didn't wanna close doors before they had the chance to open. But once I found filmmaking, which was senior year and kind of really like this summer out of high school, I my first gig was somewhere in that summer I think it was um, White Coco, the coconut water company. Oh, yeah. Like 200 bucks. They sponsored the, the podcast. Oh, the really? Case, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 200 bucks, they said. Yeah. Like 200 bucks, make us a little video. And I like saw the 200 bucks and I've always been very like, if I like a little business minded. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, growing up on Koi, like I had two little brothers. Um, we, we grew up in Kaloa and I would buy my uncle's Hayden mangoes for 10 cents a pop. Fill a cooler, push it to the side of the road, put my little brother in a diaper. He was out of diapers, but I knew a diaper would sell it. And I'd have him with the sign, like <laughs> ice cold mango, 20 bucks a pop from the tourist driving by. Wow. I come home with like four or $500 at like eight years old. Wow. So, so I <laughs> always had like just a little bit of a, and then I, I probably still have that money in my bank account. Like wow. I'm very, I don't spend money unless I feel like it can make money. Mm -hmm. I've been very just kind of business minded my whole life. So when I saw the opportunity to make money with something, I just kind of jumped at it. Um, but growing up on Koi, to put myself back in that spot, I don't know, I, I feel like growing up in Hawaii, especially as a kid, is probably like a roller coaster for everybody. Like sometimes it's like, the best thing in the world and sometimes it kind of feels low mm -hmm. i guess that would be anywhere in the world but looking back at it it's just i'm just so grateful mm -hmm. like so grateful well what were the highs and lows um i mean the highs definitely just the freedom of it mm -hmm. like i can't I, there's no one I really talk to where they even have a childhood that sounds anywhere near as fun as my childhood was. Like at one point, we were, I mean, in any other culture, it would sound so bad. Like we were broke, pretty much homeless, and we were having the time of our life. <laughs> like we were like half living at the beach. My dad just bought this piece of property, but there was no house on it. And so we are like, living like pretty much just tent living mm -hmm. on the property and that was for a year or two and so my mom at some point got sick of it and we like moved out to the beach so we just lived at the beach 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like in... It's just weird to to say it like that because it was such a positive, beautiful experience. Watching my dad build the house, helping him build the house. Like, I remember getting there and like seeing it all buffalo grass and just there used to be um, a pig farm. Mm -hmm. So there's all troughs everywhere and like old broken down houses. And I can remember getting there. I'm like, oh, this is where we're living now. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then we just like moved in pretty much. And then just watched it turn into, like, the most beautiful house ever. That's awesome. You got to see it from the ground up. Yeah. And then you, you almost got to experience two different worlds, mm-hmm. you know, at such a young age. And I, and when you're so young, you don't really know what else is out there. So if you're not comparing what you have to anything else, then you're already in, in paradise, mm-hmm. right? You're not like, oh, look at this shack. I wish I had a mansion. You don't, you're not going to want that if you've never seen a mansion before, mm-hmm. right? And growing up, there wasn't social media. No. So yeah, that's like, true. So you didn't have this, you know, comparison is a thief of joy kind of mindset. Mm-hmm. That's a good way of putting it. I also, I don't, I like, I even seeing, that's one of the biggest things. I've My whole beginning of my career is travel-based. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing it's given me is everything and realizing I need nothing. Like I've seen all that stuff that people work, like I've gotten thrown into all the super luxurious, cool scenarios where it's like, that's like the dream. Like that's what you'd want to be doing. Get their experience. Like this is cool for two hours, max, two days, maybe like whatever the lifestyle is, it was, I'm so grateful that I got to taste it and realize it's not really of interest to me. And same with traveling, like, I wish every kid from Hawaii got to travel just so they know that they want to be home. Mm. Like there's no place like this place. Um, And like if I could just if I could just instill anything in the kids growing up here, it'd be that like, bruh, this is it. I agree. Yeah. It was not it wasn't until I left to Spain and Argentina Mm. and then I lived in Madagascar for three years. After that, I was like, I don't want to live my life anywhere else mm-hmm. in the world besides Hawaii. And especially when you're away for so long, you, you miss it, you feel almost disconnected. Mm-hmm. And then when you come back and you get to reconnect and get rooted again, you don't want to uproot <laughs> ever mm-hmm. again. Never. Yeah, I, I love it. I totally see it. And again, I, I agree that people should be able to travel and gain perspective and this accumulate experience. It's like playing Pokemon, right? Mm-hmm. You travel all around the Johto region, then you go to the Kanto region, <laughs> and then you're just gaining experience, right? Yeah. If you fail, you just try again. Mm-hmm. And like, that's that's life, you know? I played a lot of video games growing up. You're probably a lot more adventurous than I was. But, you know, I had all the things, you know, running around the neighborhood, throwing, having water balloon fights, mm-hmm. and, you know, climbing up trees and all that. I had all that too, but, you know. I was the video game head when I got to go to my cousin's house. Uh, yeah. Or TV. I just oh, you, you were that cousin, the one that didn't have TV. But yeah. So, so yeah. you'd go to the fr- yeah. cousin's house and you'd be glued to it. Huh? All I want to do. You want to go play outside? <laughs> nope. Not a chance. Zach and Cody's up in 30 minutes. That's all I want to do today. That's a sweet life. <laughs> I'd just go and they had the sweet cereal too. I'd like climb up to the top like, Captain Crunch, yeah. yeah. You just get home all shirt out. <laughs> just like, <laughs> what's wrong with Sam? <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's awesome. So I, I haven't really spent much time uh, in Kauai. I think we played Kauai High School in football when I was like a freshman and we slept on the gym floor, mm-hmm. got smashed, <laughs> went back to Hilo the next day. <laughs> that was that was my only experience in Kauai. So I all I see is like the images and videos that I see online. But I, I would love to go back because it seems like it's such a an amazing place. I mean, all the islands are amazing. Big Island's amazing. Mm-hmm. I would always say like the outer islands are nicer. I mean, it's a personal opinion. It depends where you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like it because it's a little bit more country. It depends. Even though you can find country places mm-hmm. here in, um, you know, on Oahu. But as an outer island boy, mm-hmm. I, I feel like the lifestyle is a little bit more like traditional. Yeah. A little bit more Hawaiian where it's like everyone's Ohana. Everybody knows each mm-hmm. other. Over here, it's on Oahu. It's a little bit easier to get lost mm-hmm. in like 
all the confusion and have like more shallow relationships mm -hmm. where everything on you know and i'm only speaking anecdotally from being coming from a small town everything is much other relationships are a lot deeper mm -hmm. 100 percent. yeah all my best friends are still my best friends since cakey days so same it's easy yeah and i feel like you don't always see that but one thing i want to say about oahu because i feel like i owe it because i've been i've definitely been shitting on oahu for most of my life of just like the sacrifice island, like whatever, like da 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 da. But I think one of the beautiful things that Oahu instills in people is they have to fight for it. Mm. Like if they want to be a part of the culture and represent the culture, it's like for us, I swear, you can fall into it and just be cruising. And it's just, it's there for the picking. And I, I feel like the people I meet from Oahu who are a part of the culture, um, like a part of the Lahui, like have some sort of that energy, like that real Hawaiian energy. It's something that they've had to fight for. And it's something that they, they hold on to really tightly. Mm -hmm. And it almost gives them like a little bit, uh, there's just like a little bit more power and force behind it sometimes. Yeah, it's like the chip on the shoulder. Yeah. It's, yeah, which yeah. I think is, is, is beautiful. And I also think that like you were saying, um, there are places here on Oahu that blow Beautiful. me away. And there's just some of the most culturally rich and, and individuals with just so much mana'o and just like, wow, like. So I, I, I think it's a beautiful place, but <laughs> that being said, I would never live Kauai's here. Kauai's why. I would never <laughs> live here. I just couldn't do it. It's not possible. I don't think there's anywhere in the world I could live. Like, I, it sounds so dramatic. And then, um, but my friend's like, if you didn't live on Kauai, where'd you live? I'm like, I think I just, I just, I just die. I was, and I was like, just I was so genuine. Like I wasn't even just like, yeah, no, I just think if I, if I would just, I would just hope that my life just is concluded. You mm -hmm. know, I just love being here. Like, I think if I had to be away for a long time, it would just break my heart. What's and the I, longest you've ever been away? Three months, I think. Okay. And Maybe that was just for filming, just traveling, 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 moving. When I, in the beginning, when I first started accumulating jobs, um, like my first jobs were for influencers. Mm-hmm. And I would just fly here and do that or do this. And it, it, it'd be like in Europe. And that, this was filming. Yeah, this was filming. Mm -hmm. Like one of my first influencers, this is going to sound ridiculous. One of my first jobs for an influencer, I was shooting a lingerie brand in Greece. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay. But I took that ticket and I just cruised Europe for like a month. Um, I got a call from my friend. And he was like, oh, there's a swell that's going to hit the mentalize, you know, come down and film some of it. You can shoot all, all the lifestyle stuff. We'll have people to, sh to film the waves. Um, you just come down and cruise and like film, um, film the lifestyle stuff and they'll film the waves. And so I got to surf and I just kept bouncing. Mm. I was like, as soon as I got a ticket out, that's like the, the hardest part. The ticket out is like where all the money is. Once I was in Europe, I'm like, it's, it's easy to travel. I was like, I'm going to keep Europe, moving. Yeah. All, as soon as I go back to Koi, if I'm going anywhere, it's going to cost me a penny. Mm -hmm. So I just kept moving. But then there's definitely, I feel like the two month for me, like if I hit that two month where I'm gone for two months, like one Gabby Pahinui song and I'm just bawling. I'm just like, <laughs> I want to go home. Bro. I just want to go home. <laughs> um, miss my, I start missing my brothers. I just start like missing that breath. Like yeah. I love when I get to Koi and it's been a long one. And I just like breathe those trade winds in. And I'm just like, oh God, I'm home. Thank yeah. you. I, lo I love coming out of the airport and feeling the ocean breeze, or the, kind of the humidity. It's like thick. Yeah, yeah. Thick, a little bit salty. <laughs> just like, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you started getting into this uh, influencer world, right? And mm -hmm. you were kind of one of the OG influencer there there were some people mm -hmm. you know maybe before I, I think chelsea Kauai is probably yep. like the biggest influencer to ever come come out of hawaii mm -hmm. if we're not counting bretman rock but she was way before bretman oh yeah she was before bretman he's a hammer he's a hammer he she he she whatever sorry they, they. no actually he says he, he doesn't care doesn't care he, yeah he said he's i am he's trying so, to get better at that though yeah i think hawaii is a little bit behind in just understanding the importance and the gravity of, of using those correct pronouns and like 
but I, I appreciate it when people give me grace. I'm just yeah. Like, okay. No, I, I, I'm not trying to be offensive. I will try. If, if someone tells me this is how they want to be represented, mm -hmm. I got no problem with that. Yeah. This, my thing is, I don't really understand like why or like how it came about, mm -hmm. but I'm going to respect it. Like if yeah. you want to be called something, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll call it. I'm not going to mm -hmm. just ignore your want to need and be a mean person. I, what, once someone said this to me and it all of a sudden made sense. Like, do you, is it, I don't know if do you, do people call you American? Uh, like if I travel abroad, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And doesn't it kind of like, even me who's like white and has zero like actual bloodline connection to Hawaii, it still rubs me a little weird. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like that. It's mm -hmm. just like, I mean, technically I'm American, I guess, mm -hmm. but that's not how I want like they like it's almost like it's just there's a certain pride there where you want to be mm. well it's i'm from hawaii you want to say that actually like oh you're you're from america well i'm from hawaii mm. it's just a little like you want to represent that means something to you well how i guess you want to be known for how you see yourself mm -hmm. you know so i i guess you know if i see myself as a hawaiian and you're calling me american i'm I'm almost like, oh, yeah. yes, but no. So and if you I, see yourself as a they and you want yeah. to be a they, then bruh, let yeah. me know. I don't understand the they, though. I don't get it at all, I but just let yeah, me know. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody can explain to, to us. You guys, um, you should have somebody on. Yeah, I'm sure there's yeah. somebody who can easily break all that down. Yeah. And it's so it's interesting that that pronoun conversation is interesting because when you travel and you look at other languages, even Hawaiian, there isn't a gender. Yeah like for 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 pronouns mm -hmm. you know because like spanish has genders for every single thing <laughs> but uh for like you um he she it's just it like oya for hawaiian it's, mm -hmm. it's just it it's she just or it. she in malagasy it's easy mm -hmm. it so you don't you're not really you don't really know if it's a uh, it's i guess it's ju it's gender neutral so mm -hmm. something uh interesting that that i've noticed over my my travels and i'm sure you probably yeah noticed I, that's why things. i think it's so difficult I think that people are, it's, it's difficult with languages that are um, whatever based, mm -hmm. gender based. Yeah, like yeah. Spanish, brah. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to take he and she out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, same with over here. It's just, it's a he, she. But I, that I always, um, we should definitely circle back to that. Definitely, for the, sure. Yeah. So going back to the, the influencing thing, mm -hmm. at what point did you realize you were in, influencer and like i don't you know being called an influencer isn't something that everybody likes especially these mm -hmm. days because it kind of has a negative connotation mm -hmm. you know attached to it because of the night think of an influencer it's somebody doing a tiktok dance and mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever so it's kind of lost its value mm -hmm. um but you know content creators i you're, I, you're creating content yeah. and eh, you're one of the, the i don't OGs. care you can call me an influencer <laughs> i don't mind at all i'm okay. not one of those i used to be um but I don't think it's important. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm fine. I and an influencer, I might have might have lost some of its uh, magic, but it hasn't lost value. That's influencers true. make money, so I can get a lot of free things. Call me influencer <laughs> all day. Um, Do you I might move your mic a little closer. No, yeah, not at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Is it okay if I put it like that, like lower a little bit? Jordan, how do I sound? We we all say a shaka length. Shaka length. Okay. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, clip <laughs> it, ma. clip it. Um, influencer. Yeah, no, I, I think that it's funny. <clears throat> I used to really. This is something that, that I've learned recently, but I put way too much value in the beginning on being understood by people. Like there for a long time, a lot of my action went behind wanting to fit into the world. Like I wanted to have a simple explanation for what I was doing. Like when people say, what do you do? I wanted to be able to say something that was respectable. I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm an influencer. And they're like, like you said, I was pretty OG with it. So like, what is that? And I try to explain like, well, I pretty much, I have a large following and I incorporate, I'm like, I make little advertisements into my life is pretty much what I do, which now I can actually simplify it pretty easily. I could just say that, but it would always come with all these questions that I didn't feel like answering. Mm -hmm. Max Holloway always says, but I don't want to talk about fighting. I like 
watch a lot of his interviews and he just he's like when I'm with my friends I don't want to talk about fighting that's what I do for work mm -hmm. that's how, that's what I always felt like with camera stuff when people would want to ask me about photos or videos or influencing and I just be like I just want to hang out I don't want to talk about work I'm not you want to talk about fighting <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about fighting bro. I want to talk about Israel Adesanya smoked Pereira that's all I want to talk ah, ah, clip it no. <laughs> um but yeah, I just, so I, you know, it's funny as I used to tell people I did construction. <laughs> if, if I was at a party and people were liquored up enough, my uncles would be like, boy, what you like, what you been up to? I'd be like, oh, I just work construction with Uncle Dougie. He's like, Raj, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to him, try to explain to my drunk uncle what an influencer is. I have zero interest in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just for a long time, my point that I was going to make was I wanted to fit into the world and I wish I didn't waste so much time in trying in making moves accordingly to fit into mm -hmm. something. If you're different, rock that. That's your superpower mm -hmm. right there. Just doesn't matter. Just follow that. Like that uniqueness. Don't don't worry when you don't fit in. Not fitting in. It might feel weird in the beginning when you're young. Well, I'm st we're still young. But like, I want my goal is to be young till I'm like 60. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna start saying I'm old. Just. <laughs> But young as in you're insecure with who you are. You don't know who you are yet. You're still mm -hmm. coming up, which high school, that means you. You're still insecure about who you are. That's yeah. totally okay. Yeah. When you're not sure who you are, you just want to fit in. And like, as soon as you can break out of that, that's a superpower right there. Definitely. Just like hone whatever makes you weird, dude. Yeah, yeah. Keep rocking that. Yeah. No, I think a good way to put it, well, my mindset is that I, because I always feel young. I feel like I'm a kid. I have this child like energy and but the way i think i feel like has always been mature mm -hmm. i've always looked at things differently i you know never got into you know drinking or doing drugs i've always just had this this vision of what i wanted to do mm -hmm. um but i've always been just like a kid who liked nunchucks and <laughs> video games and dragon ball z and uh -huh. whatever and just playing sports and all that but i was the, on the naruto side of things yeah <laughs> yeah that was my brother micah but yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. You know, you you want to be young forever, but you 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 have to have that side of maturity, mm -hmm. especially for business and to do what we're doing, you know, because even here, we're just joking around, yeah. having a good time. It's like we're just like me and Jordan always talk about how we we bring the, the child out of each other. Like our look at our text. Like it's so boyish <laughs> and stupid. Um, we'd probably get canceled if you read it. So don't ever hack our phones. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, look, we're we're running a professional uh -huh. podcast, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's the the level of maturity that we have to um, make one side of our brain mm -hmm. <laughs> focus on. No, I'm I'm definitely like I'm here. I'm excited to meet you, but I'm definitely here for Jordan. Like I, <laughs> I was trying to slide only because he was giving you so many compliments. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not watching the the visual feed, he he's in this cutout t-shirt. His I wasn't gonna wear this. <laughs> I had a nice shirt picked out. I spent way too much time in town. It was hot. I just I drank a Vietnamese coffee. I was sweating. <laughs> Auntie got them all sweating. Auntie got me sweating. <laughs> well, you got the shaka tea to cool you down. <laughs> yeah, no, the shaka teas are super good. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually would love to drink another one of these. Yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get you another one at end the shishi break. Can I do break. this mint one again? No, is it mint? Pineapple mint, yeah. yeah there's a, there's another one I'm staring at. Go, yeah, go grab it. All right. <laughs> Clip it. Show off your, your cowboy boots while, while you're up there. Where you? Oh, there you go. Yeehaw. ASM. <laughs> Clip it. Yeah. Uh, you, you, is, okay, this is something I just realized. Is Yeehaw the cowboy version of Yesa? I, I would, yeah, always, I would be, say right? it's Chihu. Oh, it's a yeah, Chihu? Yeah, I would say oh, Chihu. Okay. Chihu's I was just yeehaw. thinking the Yee part. Yee. That was too. Yesa. Too easy, yeah. Yeehaw. Yes, Where sir. is Yesa? Yes, sir. Did we start Yesa or did Tahiti start Yesa? I think Yesa is just a local, like a pigeon just thing. Just pigeon thing? Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to think that Iam Tongi started Yesa. That's he, true. He you know, it. we'll give it to him. <laughs> yeah. You can have it, cuz. <laughs> you kill. You deserve Yesa. Yeah, yeah. My cousin, Iam, that's all you. Yeah. So going back to the, the influencer thing, mm -hmm. at what point did you realize that this, is, this can be a career and... You know, you're going to go f fully into it. And then how did that evolve into filmmaking and winning 
actual award and you know that gives you so much credibility mm-hmm. you know uh, you know it's funny it actually it started um it kind of was a flip-flop for me so the influencing came after okay so i my whole story as far as career goes how it started i was in Koi high i was in spanish class we were watching a movie I was doing my science homework because I don't I don't want to do my homework at home. Like I want to do all my work in school. I want to get off. I want to go surf or fish or play with my friends. Whatever I was gonna do that day, that's what I wanted to be doing. My Spanish teacher starts chewing me out. She's like, "If you're like, what? Well, you're not watching the like you're not watching the movie. Like this is Spanish class. You're supposed to be learning Spanish." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Yeah, check." I'm supposed to be learning Spanish. I'm watching a movie. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why can't I be doing my <laughs> science homework? And like, obviously, I was way more respectful than that. I I didn't call her chick. I was very, I was very just like. <laughs> it was professor. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand why I can't be doing my science homework. She got super mad. Kicked me out of class. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to photography. My teacher Bullocks, super cool guy. He'll let me do my science homework. It's you know, it's an elective class. Like, get in there. He's like, what are you doing here? <clears throat> Told him my story. I was like, can I do my science homework? And he's like. No, <laughs> if you do, if you do my class, you do my work. I'm like, bruh, it's photography. You're the cool teacher. What are you talking about? What work? And he's like, figure something out. Like this is this is the video course. Make a video, uh-huh. and literally made my first video right there with my phone. Mm-hmm. I had um, three of my friends. One of them is Pono Bukowski, who's like my friend since like baby days, like bike riding kind around Kaloa Town. And he, we like, I think he did a backflip off a wall. And then I had other couple friends like play with a plant or something or do something weird. And I just like clipped it all up, clip it. And then Hashtag clip it. <laughs> hashtag clip it. And then I, that was like my first little edit. And I was like, oh, that was fun. And I just kept doing it. Um, I liked pairing things to music. I've always, I liked, I liked being able to create something. I thought that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always had like a little bit of a creative bug. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to like write comic books, like. My mom is a painter. I just, I liked painting. Like I liked creative things. Um, so I think I had that in me. And so to have an outlet and then actually f- that, like for that, that fit my other side of my personality, which was super high energy. Like I could keep moving and just do fun shit that I like to do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Worked really well for me. And then summer came around. I bought a GoPro cause we were gonna go me and all my friends were getting in kayaks. We're going down to Nepali. We're going to Camp Kala. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get a GoPro. Because I, you know, can't bring my phone in there, really. And you got $400 saved up from mangoes at eight years old. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> and then, you know what's funny? I bought my first camera in fifth grade with a shoebox that had my mango money and silver dollars from when I lost my teeth. Swear to God. Really? Yeah. Oh, like the, from the tooth fairy. Yeah, from the tooth fairy. You get under the pillow. I thought you were selling your yeah. tooth or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but back to the where we're at in the story. Make those videos of us just having a good time in Kalao, like playing, fishing, hiking, whatever, kayaking. Um, had, had a bunch of fun with that. And then I got that first job that we talked about. Once I saw money, I was like, okay, cool. One more thing I'd like to say here. Throughout high school, I never had a thing. I never had something, like I said in the beginning, I got good grades in case I needed them. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know who I was going to be. Nothing ever called to me. I was never particularly good at anything. And I would I would pray through. I can remember so clearly. And I don't think praying is what like... I don't think it matters if you pray or meditate or whatever. I think it's important that you put out what you want to the universe. Mm -hmm. And you, whether you believe in the universe conspiring Mm -hmm. in your favor or not, you putting that that out every day is enough energy to be putting towards what you want. Just by going like, okay, what do I want? Just by asking that question on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. that's why I found something. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think I picked up a lot of things. I tried a lot of things. But the fact that I kept asking Mm -hmm. that question continuously 
it left my mind in that place so that when something came, I was open to it. And I was like, oh, this could be that thing. Yeah. And then when I saw money, I was ready to hustle for it. So I worked on that. I, once I made money, I bought bigger cameras. I kept going. I had like a really nice little career set for a second where I was making a really good amount of money filming the interior of houses. Um, Kukuyula, like rich people houses, mm -hmm. like country club kind of stuff. That was my first like big client where I was like, oh, okay, this is a career. I can make money doing this, like nothing crazy, but I saw money, like actual money. And this was an interesting, another interesting pivot that I learned. Always follow the passion. Mm -hmm. Don't follow the money. It's gonna, it's not gonna lead to more money. If you can figure out how to make money what you're passionate about, even if it doesn't financially work out for you, you're still gonna be doing what you love. But it's the only chance you're gonna have at making real money, I think. Because mm -hmm. if you don't love it, you're not gonna get to that tier. There's always gonna be people that are on fire in that little niche. Mm -hmm. And if you're not one of those people, you're not gonna be making that big money. So, because I always hear that, so I wanna clarify, because people think like, it's either love or the money. It's like, no, the love equals the money. You just gotta figure out how to make it work. Mm -hmm. So I had this little career path going for me of just like on Kauai real estate filming. Like I could see it. And this is right after high school. Yeah, maybe a year okay. in at this point. Well, what year was that? Um, I th think I graduated in 13. 13. Okay. Might have been so, 14. So about two years into Instagram. Yeah. So Instagram is pretty yeah, new. Pretty new. I didn't have a following yet. Yeah, about six years into yeah. YouTube, seven years into YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just trying to get some context. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's good context. You know what else is funny? I was the last person out of anyone I knew to have an Instagram. Like my really? parents had Instagram before I did. When did you start your YouTube? When I started making longer form videos that I needed to put them somewhere so I could share them with people. Okay. Um. Anyway, but I think I so I maybe started the YouTube in 2016. Oh, okay. I think. Um. Maybe before that. But yeah. whatever. I, no, 2016 sounds right. Mm -hmm. But so that's where the career is going. I abandoned that. I'm like, I'm because I started to not like having a camera. I, like I started to not like holding it. I started to not like shooting. I started to not want to film. Like before that, I wanted to pick a camera up every day. I wanted to shoot everything I saw. I like the light is coming in here. This is happening over here. I was excited. Mm -hmm. And I was trading that excitement for money. And I was like, nope, I've been waiting my whole life to have something that I'm good at. I'm not just going to trade it for money. I'm going to take it this way and s just keep my eyes open for w opportunities. Mm -hmm. Opportunities came. I ended up working for influencers. Um, I accumulated a bit of a following. That was another thing I started doing. Um, I started really hustling Instagram. I saw the value in having an audience. Um, I was never like crazy in love with it. Well, no, you know, I was. At one point, I was super down to just like, I liked getting likes. I liked getting the attention. numbers up. Like I liked the yeah. attention. It was fun. Mm -hmm. um, the, obviously that like, I got burnt out of that for f at some point, but I was racking those numbers up. More jobs started coming in. More opportunities started coming in. I started working for influencers. Um, when I did that, they were making like 10 times the amount of money I was making from being in front of the camera. And I was doing all the work. Mm. I'm, I have to edit. They can go party. I'm like, this is shot. This is not oh, the gig. That's a good point, yeah. And I was like. They're just the talent showing up. They're just the talent. And I was like, that's where all the money is. Because a camera can be replaced. Generally, not you, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, babe. <laughs> um, but a face can't. Yeah. Like, um. Who did we just reference? Uh, Rocket, ra, r, the awesome Hawaii talent, biggest talent in Hawaii. 100%. Oh, Brett Rock. Brett. Yeah. Never met him. Um, started following him recently. Mm. Super love following him. Yeah. Um, can never be replaced. Mm -hmm. He is who he is. He, she, they. They're them. He's her. He's killing it. <laughs> I followed him. <laughs> that whole sentence was just so confusing. Don't, don't clip it. They're them. They're them. 
We don't know how to do this yet. We yeah. have to have Brent on. You yeah, have yeah, had yeah. Brent on. You should have already had this conversation. I've, I've had him on, but we didn't talk about okay, this. Okay. But, um, yeah. but anyway, can't be replaced. Impeccable talent can't be replaced. So I saw that kind of thing, and that excited me. And I wanted to go after that. Um, and so I just flipped the camera around. Boom. Okay, all of a sudden, the camera's pointed this way. Try to get comfortable um, in being in front. I did get comfortable. I became a quote-unquote influencer. And I had a lot of fun with it for a little bit. Um, but what was happening was I was traveling the world with that platform. Like I was getting jobs everywhere. And my I was completely changing as a person. Like, from everyone I was meeting, everything I was experiencing. And my Instagram didn't reflect that at all. And so I started to feel like I just got over that whole everything's about me kind of mentality. Not saying all influencers are like that, but genuinely, yes. And even if their mentality isn't like that, that's what they're feeding on the on Instagram or TikTok, or whatever, because that's what their audience wants to see. They want more of them. Yeah, I think there's a there's a slight hint of narcissism at the mm -hmm. very least to be doing what we're doing. Hundred percent. Even if we want to deny it. Hundred percent. Yeah. You have to feel like you have a story worth telling, mm -hmm. or there's something about you special and it yeah. needs to be seen, which I think everyone should have that amount of narcissism. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. You should have that. Another word for that would just be like. Self belief, yeah. or just thinking you're cool, confident, and like having yeah. a, like befriending yourself, mm -hmm. and just be like, dude, I'm a cool guy. I'd hang out with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love that. I love that. So, you know the kind? Yeah. yeah. Clip it. <laughs> um, we should put a mic on Jordan just so that everyone knows my my jokes are hitting <laughs> at least with, <laughs> with Jordan, a like because like, <laughs> we can't. Yeah. Or I'll I'll say out loud, chuckle, chuckle, Jordan. Yeah, chuckle. just put it in. Jordan, chuckle. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I got, I had, I got sick of creating content that was just always talking about myself. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I lost interest. And what was happening to me, I was changing because of these experiences that I was having. So I wanted to start sharing these experiences, mostly thinking about my friends back home. I was like, wow, I'm super blessed to be put in these scenarios. I want to create content that people can watch and feel like they got the same thing I got out of. It just seemed like everywhere I was going, I was being given this gift and I was like, I got to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. Like it's bigger than just me. I'm not the only one that's supposed to see this. Like I want everyone to feel this because I was everywhere I went, every country, every person, it was changing who I was. So I think that's where I fell in love with telling stories. Um, and that's what I do now. Mm -hmm. Now I am an influencer. I am all these things, whatever you want to call me, whatever you want to say, I'm that. Sam but, of all trades. Sam of all trades. But I'm also a five-time Emmy winning <laughs> hey. storyteller. Burr, 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 Tell him, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. I love that. Your your story is, is so interesting to me. And then the career path. A lot of times you see people go from in front of the camera to the back. Mm -hmm. not so so much from in the back, back to, to the, the front, front. Um, it's just there's I, a song in there yeah yeah to the back to the front <laughs> to the, <laughs> we'll put it on your next uh, episode of the Back to the Wild mm -hmm. yeah 100% <laughs> yeah so, so you fell in love with I, I wouldn't I feel like you're smart. You're smart. I can tell you're a smart guy. So it was a lot more strategic than oh I really loved being in front of the camera because I felt you had to learn how to be yeah, in front of the camera, 100%. right? So you just saw you saw where the trajectory of social media was going, and mm -hmm. you know what could pay the bills. So it was a strategic move. Yeah, it, like I said, I saw the out. money. Like they saw the money. The yeah. person that I was filming was making yeah. ten times more than I was. Yeah, that's what I was like, bang. But then flip. through that, you found out that you actually love doing it. I or do you? <laughs> I do, but that's the last piece of my craft that I've perfected. I would mm -hmm. say, which. I don't actually have it. I have five of these. <laughs> one of them. Bust them out. You guys better tune into I the visual I, feed. I thought I should bring one. I mean, if this is why you're, if this is why you're having Wrapped up in his uh, iPhone charger. See you. <laughs> oh, wow. I've never seen one in person. Is it real? Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. I literally bought it just to get that I reaction. 
<laughs> I thought it was going to be like the plastic kind where it's like super light. No. That's real gold. That's 200 carat gold right here. <laughs> Wait, is it better if it's higher or lower, the carats? I don't know. I don't know jewelry. I stuff. also don't know. Yeah. Wow. Uh, human interest news or long form content. Oh, outstanding achievement award. Back to the wild. Samuel Potter, executive producer. So wow. This is the one we won for like, this was the. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Clip it. Clip this. This, this was the <laughs> new profile pic. <laughs> Thumb. <laughs> oh, you go. wow. Yeah. That's so, so cool. This is that. This one was for. Like this was, we won this for the, the whole show, the show as a whole. This is like best overall in the human interest category. Okay. So we won four other ones. One of them was for being a host. I don't know what to do with this now. Do we leave it out? Mm, Should we maybe put it in the corner yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. Just like tuck right it in. <laughs> yeah. Give it like a seatbelt or yeah, something. Yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wrap your iPhone charger yeah, around Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. Um. One of them is for, for this. So executive producer, director, um, cinematographer, editor, and host. You're like the everything, everywhere, all at once version of the Oscar. I, I, yeah, one day I'd like to get an Oscar. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, but you just swept all the swept. categories. Super, super stoked. I honestly am most proud because... Um, because we swept. Like, if we got a couple, I'm like, yeah, we deserve those couple. Yeah, did, did people bring the brooms out? The brooms? Yeah. Oh, no, there's no brooms. <laughs> I got some I got some chihus. Yeah. There was a couple Hawaiians in the crowd. All right. Um, you got a billboard in New York. Yeah. Was it called Times Square? Yeah, Times Square. Amazing. We had a billboard to yeah. celebrate the nominations. That's and then so we cool. turned, we were, we were ecstatic that we got five nominations. Did You didn't expect to win? No. I didn't expect to win. I mean, have you seen your film? It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just didn't, though. Um, we'll, we'll tell you that whole story in a second. Okay. But the reason I brought that out is because I got one for host. Mm -hmm. That one meant a lot to me because that is the last piece of the puzzle I felt like. I felt like I got a good grip at being a director and telling a story and producing. I hired out editor, cinematographer. I directed all the underwater stuff. That's why I got one for cinematography. I'm very hands-on with editing, but I can't make anything super pretty. I can structure a really good story with timing and music and like, but you wouldn't want to watch my film. Mm -hmm. If I don't send it to my editor, you don't want to see it. The, is that Nainoa? Did Nainoa, um, did Nainoa actually, he works, he did Aloha Aina, which is the one that we got nominated oh, okay, for. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so he, me and him edited that, he shot that. I shot the underwater stuff. Mm. I'm always shooting the underwater stuff because I am a good free diver. Mm. Um, not so much because I'm good with the camera. Mm -hmm. I still have those skills, but I just, you have to learn, like, like I said, you got to learn what you love. Mm -hmm. Filmmaking's big. I found what I love within filmmaking and I chased that. Mm -hmm. I like telling stories. So the first thing to go is editing. I need an editor. Second thing was the camera because I felt like it was a distraction. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be thinking of trying to create a beautiful world for people to live in and see in a mm -hmm. film and connecting with someone. And finding the root of the story, you know? Um, I learned that in the Amazon. Like, that was just so chaotic um, that I was like, I really need, I can't be living in, in the holding a camera world and the trying to tell a story world. Mm -hmm. um, but host, we got here because you said, I don't know, do you actually like being a host? I do. Um, I'm super grateful for it. I find it very fun. Because what got me into filming in the first place was I found something that would let me do anything. I don't like to just do one thing. As you, you've seen with some of my Instagram stuff, I, don't, I can't just do one thing. I need to pick things up and try things. So being a host is so much fun because I get to be there and be physical and be doing the thing and be with the people and give people hugs and eat the food and hang out. That's why I like being a host. But... I think as like time goes on, I'll get my fill and what I'll really lean into is like writing and directing. Mm. I think like my biggest passion, like my purest outlet has always been writing. Yeah. I love writing. You know, you know what's the coolest thing about winning an Emmy f as a host? And I don't know if I have talked about this with McKenna Maduli or maybe just off the podcast with somebody or maybe something I was thinking about. Winning an award for being a host, I think is the greatest honor you can have 
because you're winning an award for being yourself. That's cool. And that's the coolest thing. If you're doing it right. If you're doing it right. You're people yourself. are awarding you for being yourself. That's cool. And that's the coolest thing. You know, you're just on the camera doing what you love, showing people your passion, mm -hmm. and they love it. You know what's crazy is how hard it is to be yourself when you get out in front of a camera. You're really good at doing it. <laughs> this podcast thing. I haven't been interviewed in a minute. I wasn't <laughs> nervous, but I was definitely in the beginning. It took me a while to get comfortable. <laughs> Maybe I was a little nervous. Maybe it's Maybe the, it was the coffee. coffee. Maybe his auntie was in the back <laughs> just like, God, I'm going yeah. speed. <laughs> um, but it's hard to be yourself on camera. It's really hard. I th it, it takes a lot of vulnerability. For sure. Which I think is why I'm so passionate about fighting. Mm -hmm. And like MMA fighters, it's such a vulnerable thing oh, to be doing. Sure. I can't imagine in front of this whole world fighting. Could get knocked out. It's such a vulnerable thing. that I think that's the biggest draw for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, that's so funny. I was just listening um, to a Drogan podcast with Eddie Wong. I don't know if you know I who that is. pretty sure I know who that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And they were talking about jujitsu and MMA and like mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm, in and sparring mm -hmm. and whatever. And he mentioned how s this one guy doesn't want us, didn't want to spar with him. Eddie, Eddie was saying that this other guy, he would want to train boxing, but he never wants to spar. And they're talking about that. And Joe Rogan said, or one of them said that it was a vulnerable thing to get in spar. And I was like, I never understood what that meant until you just said that right mm -hmm. now. How the vulnerable thing about fighting is that you could get beat up. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I was trying to think like, why is it vulnerable that you don't want to get punched in the face? Uh -huh. But it's the being in front of other people and having knowing that there's a possibility because the fight game is so unpredictable, even mm -hmm. if you're sparring, that you could get knocked out. Mm -hmm. You could get embarrassed mm -hmm. so easily. I think there's a biological <laughs> side to it too of like... As men. Uh, yeah. Well, and then also yeah. like if you just think about schoolyard if you if you get in a fight and you get beat up you're not like you're coming out of that as a loser because now people can kind of like they saw what you had like you can't punk anybody out anymore yeah my whole like stick growing up and like how I not get beat up is i just punk people out like if they came up to me all like da 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 da, -da i just like i would never back down mm -hmm. not because i knew how to fight but because no one no one knew I didn't know how to fight. <laughs> so I was like, if I like go a little bit, if I start like apologizing or like backing up, or da, 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 they're going to know I can't fight and they're going to knock me out. So I would just like, I'd always just act like wanting to fight and just pray to God someone was going <laughs> to break it up. That was always my feel. So that's also why it's vulnerable because people see your, yeah, like yeah. What, what you have. Definitely. And let's talk about that a little bit. Um, and then we'll, I want to talk about the coral gardeners right before mm -hmm. we get into Instagram question and take a shishi break because I can feel the shaka tea coursing to my body right now. Um, you, you did this video where you documented yourself training for a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, super random, but, you know, getting to know you and just following along on your story makes sense. You, like you, you said on our pre-production call that you like to be a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like to try things out. Even sometimes a punching bag. <laughs> yep. Um, I, wa I watched that before, uh, a while ago. I remember when you first posted it, I watched it. Super crazy. Well, like, tell us about that. Um, it was like mid-COVID, so I just, um, I don't know, I just had, I wasn't, I was just a little, I had nothing to fight for, or to struggle, like. Needed a little adversity yeah, in your life. Yeah, <laughs> I could say something really f philosophical right now. But I needed to get punched in the face yeah, to keep me humble. But yeah, pretty much I just needed to get punched. Um, I just wanted something to strive for, and it was on my list. I just have a bunch of weird things I want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what it felt like. I didn't actually get to like enter a legitimate fighting organization, but I got close enough to where it felt like that. Mm -hmm. um, like it was a very well planned out like. Backyard style. Backyard style yeah. brawl. Like, it was super fun. I learned a lot. What, what intrigued me the most about fighting was the training. Um, I just wanted to... I wanted to have a reason to push my body to the ass, absolute limits um, physically. Work really hard physically as an athlete. That's what I was most excited about. Because all my work in my life has always been creative 
Um, not always. I mean, career wise, mm -hmm. after I got out of the restaurant industry, tourism industry, and yeah. I had my career, yeah. it's creative. Like my hard work is not romantic at all. It's like sitting at a desk for like 12 hours. That's my hustle. Mm -hmm. And then you'd see like athlete hustles are always like super romantic. It's sweat and gym and like- Music like, playing yeah, in the background. Yeah, it's just like gangster. And I was like, and obviously the most gangster ones fighting. Because like, in my opinion, like I'm not a big sports guy. I understand that they're fun, but there's no other sport that I would dedicate myself to because a sport's a sport, it's a game, it's made up. Fighting's real. Mm -hmm. Fighting's a, like a biological, it's like one of those things that matters actually. Mm -hmm. Because in a fight, you know, like whoever won in the end, like whoever won, not like we wouldn't go there, but it, if this was real, the winner lives and the loser dies. Yeah, so yeah. there's like, if this was like real, gladiator like gladiator, style. or even yeah. if we were like lions or something. There, there's like, a there's a clear winner and loser. Yeah. If it's not going to the judges, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I just wanted a reason to to put my my body towards something, um, and I knew that without a fight that would never happen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, why would you ever put yourself? Like why I would have why would I ever work that hard? Why would I put myself through that much hell if there wasn't a reason? There has to be a reason, and that reason is I want to win the fight at the end. Um, so what me and my friend did, we were like good friends, me and Juan. We trained together. We were like in really good shape. We were doing like crazy workouts every day. It was like mid COVID, nothing going on, and we're just like, hey, we should train. Let's like right now. Let's both split. Let's both train for we none of us have any like traditional fighting experience. Let's split, let's train, let's come back and let's do an MMA fight. Cause we are we're already like in the gym just like pushing each other. We're like, let's like really push each other. Let's learn a new craft and we'll fight. Um and we're gonna do an MMA fight and then like a month in, we're like, maybe let's just box. Like <laughs> there's so much to learn here. Maybe we can look at least okay at one thing. And like it that boxing is also the most fun. For like if you're just putting on like a show for the boys, yeah. everyone wants to see you like, let's crack. Like let's just let's just crack each other. Mm -hmm. No one wants to see you like subpar jujitsu if you're like barely good at it. Yeah. Um so that's what we did. Um I learned a lot. It was super humbling. I learned that people can kill you is what I really learned. Training with all the guys and all the friendships I made like on Kauai and just jumping into the Kauai fight world was really fun. I met some really, really inspiring individuals and I also realized that people can kill me, mm -hmm. which is a good lesson. I think a lot of people should go to a gym just to get beat up and like they should box. Like other than like, it's it's so good for so many, so many reasons. Um, but one of those reasons, a lot of people think they can fight and they can't. If you get in there with someone who can fight, you're in really big trouble. So you should probably just like relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun experience. Took a lot of really good lessons from it. And one of like the more, like I was going to say, uh, philosophical things I took from it was, one, just a lot of humility. I got a lot of humility out of it. Um, two, I learned that like life is just struggle. Like a good life is struggle. You want to have struggle. And, and the key, I think to having a happy, like everyone wants a happy life. Happy is such a strange word. I think happiness is finding something we're struggling for. Cause if you don't work for something, you're not gonna appreciate it. It's not gonna feel that good. And you have to enjoy that process too. So it's it's finding something we're struggling for. Mm -hmm. That's happiness. And for me, I like to be able to pick things up and put them down. So struggling for that three months was enough. And having that fight, like, it also, another thing it did for me, It you know ice baths? Ice baths are super big right now. And they're just like, it's like that idea of like, fighting some mental thing where you're sitting in a in an ice bath and like trying to beat it mentally i would encourage people to get in a cage with someone who knows how to fight and and you can't get out like you can if you want you can get out of that ice bath anytime you can get out of that cage anytime you're like, okay no more i'm done but i can really remember just like getting 
I'm up against the fence and I'm just barely blocking all these shots and some of them are slipping through and I'm getting hit and I'm just like, I just want to quit. Mm. More than anything in my entire life, I can't remember anything that's made me want to quit. I wanted to quit, but I didn't. And I didn't because I had a fight. I was like, when it comes fight day, I can't quit. If I quit, I lose. And if I lose, I'm knocked out. Mm -hmm. That was my mentality. So it really allowed me to push myself, really, really push myself and find like, for me, like, like I, I always just, I also had something to prove to myself. I was very non-confrontational growing up. I like got in a bunch of fights in elementary school, um, pretty much because I'm Holly. Mm -hmm. And I just like catch a bunch of cracks in the bathroom. And then once I learned how to uh, maneuver that, no more fights. Like I, once I learned how to like maneuver out of that, no more fights. I wasn't interested. I didn't like confrontation. Um, so I was, always felt like I had, but I always felt like I had heart. I always felt like if I, if I needed to though, I feel yeah, like I could win. You. I feel like I have something <laughs> is really what I felt. And so I wanted to test that as well mm -hmm. and see if I really like have what I thought. And, I, and I've got to find out that I do have that. Not a good fighter. I got some power have no head movement, <laughs> but I got some dog in me, which is nice to find out and just like prove that to myself. Not that I want any smoke from anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very peaceful individual. I know there's a lot of killers out there. <laughs> that's, that's amazing that you even did that. that you, I, I, not only you did that, but you documented it and you put it online for, you know, potentially millions of people to see. Yeah, that was vulnerable. Because it's not like you were a nobody at that point. You already mm -hmm. had an established following. And <laughs> they were going to see you succeed or fail regardless. Yeah. People, I, I definitely caught people off guard with that one. Yeah. I but, think that that's super cool and very commendable. And so I, I love how you talked about struggle and adversity. Because I feel like not a lot of people have enough in their life. Mm -hmm. but it, it, it's weird to say that. It's like, I don't want to wish adversity and mm -hmm. hardship on people. But I feel like it makes you such a better person. I agree. And if you haven't had anything like that, maybe you just had like a really good childhood and you got the perfect job and like really nothing's going bad, like I'm stoked for you. Mm -hmm. But maybe challenge yourself, find something that you're not good at and or something that you want to do. And even if you're not good at it, just practice and try, try to go through that process because you really find out a lot about yourself when you're in those moments where you think you can't make it. Mm-hmm. That was Peace Corps for me. That was my fight. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my, like, how am I going to get out of this situation? You know, and then you get out of it. And you're like, wow, I'm, I'm capable of doing a lot more than I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah. Those are crucial moments. Definitely. Okay. Uh, let's take a shishi break and we'll get back with Instagram questions. And then inside of that, we'll talk about the the coral gardeners. Okay. okay we'll be right back. Support for this episode comes from Hawaiiverse.com. Hawaiiverse is an online marketplace with locally sourced products so you can go and support local businesses. Before I go to Amazon or any big box stores, I always check Hawaiiverse.com first if I need a gift for a friend, family member, or even myself. So make sure you check out Hawaiiverse.com, our island universe, and your one-stop shop for everything local. Make sure you use code KIA10 to save 10% off of your next order. And we're back and from we're a back. quick shishi break and some funny off-camera moments that you'll never get to hear. But nah, trust throw me, in. it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, you got to head to Patreon, sign up for the $10 a month you know tier, and then you get the whole unedited behind-the-scenes version of this. Um, good moments. Okay, Check so let's get into the Be the Aloha You Wish You See in the World fan questions presented oh, wow. by Shaka T. Okay. Okay. This is an audio question from Purely Bean. Okay, I'm going to play it. I'm super excited to... Oh, sorry. Uh, right there. Hi, Kamaka. I'm super excited to listen to your podcast and learn more about Hawaiian culture and the aloha spirit. I would love to ask Sam Potter a question on your podcast. And that's where do the ideas come from? Is it like a dream or just as a little glimpse? Is he following the breadcrumb trail of ideas? Where do those ideas come from, especially for his films? And if I'm allowed a second question, it would be, what do you do when things don't 
go to plan. So maybe it's the weather or something just doesn't line up. How do you continue to move forward and create the vision that you have in your mind and your heart? Thank you for listening to my questions and aloha. Tony, did you hear those questions? She's setting me up right now. Those are like the two hardest questions in the world. That's the easiest question. What? <laughs> Clip it. Clip it. Uh, was how that was not her? The right <laughs> okay. So, how do you get your ideas? What is kind of question like is a, that? A dream or like, what, I guess, what is your inspiration behind these ideas? How like, am I supposed to be pretentious with a question like that? <laughs> <laughs> Try your best. Ideas. And then what happens if it doesn't go, something doesn't go according to plan? Like, what if it, you're filming the Coral Gardeners and it was just storming and, you know. Okay, we'll start with B. Mm -hmm. Filmmaking never goes to plan. So just expect that off the bat and you're good. <laughs> if your expectations are none of this is going to work out, you're in a good place. Um, what I, the other good thing that I do or the reason that it, things work out well for me, I would say, is because I also don't go in... I, I, I do a lot of research. So I, I view it like I'm trying to gain as much knowledge as I can about this person so that just like I have this backlog of information or this whatever it is the story is. I'm trying to gain as much information as possible. Um, like I went and did a piece on... Um, in Mongolia on the Kazakh eagle hunters. And I did just like a week, two weeks worth of just understand, understanding why there's Kazakh people in Mongolia and how they got there and the geography and Genghis Khan and just, or Chinggis Khan and just understanding all of these things and what makes them who they are. I take all that, I backlog it, I have an idea of what the film's gonna be as far as a structure. I know a structure. I know that I need blank, 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 and blank. Mm -hmm. What those things are, I have an idea of what they can be, but I'm not going in with my agenda. Like, that's one of the beautiful things about telling other people's stories, I would say, is if I went in to make a film and made the film that was already in my head, why am I even there to make a film? Because I'm obviously already, I'm already going with my preconceived notion of what this place is and who these people are. So the other nice thing about the way I make films is I let it breathe and I let it, I let the story come out. I find it and then we tell it. I just make sure it fits into a structure so that people enjoy watching. Like there's a science to making a film and to telling a story, um, which is something that I would actually like to pass on. Like one day I want to do um, a course where I can empower people to tell their own stories because I can only tell so many stories. And so many people have beautiful stories that should be told. So I'd love to be able to teach people just how to tell a story, empower, mm -hmm. give people that power. It's such a tool. Mm -hmm. um, clip it. Clip it. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, That's good. I, I wish people had that same mindset of the preconceived notion when they come to visit Hawaii and just I mean, let the story come to them. Let yeah. your travel come to you. Mm -hmm. You know, don't come here thinking that it's going to be exactly like what you've seen on TV or what you Googled about or what you've seen on mm -hmm. Instagram. Come here with an open mind, learn, mm -hmm. and just let your story unfold. Let our story unfold in front of you. I learned that from Hawaii. The way I make films is directly inspired by my childhood mm. um, growing up here. So I think the one thing I'm really good at is being a guest. I grew up in Hawaii. This is my home. This is all I know. But I'm still a guest, right? That mentality is why I'm good at what I do. I'm good at being a guest. I'm a professional guest. That's all I am. I know how to listen. Um, I know how to be polite. I know how to be friendly. Um, I know how to be a good guest. Um, and I think that allows me to tell good stories. Mm, I love that. You, that's something you mentioned in 
uh, some of your videos mm -hmm. in Back to the Wild, and I really love that you said that. Aloha, Aina. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I just want to say mahalo to Purely Bean for the audio question. Mm -hmm. Thank I you, Purely that, Bean. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. We questions. didn't answer the... The ideas, how you get your ideas? Yeah. Well, I mean, that... Kind of did. You yeah. answered it like you just, you let it come to you. Yeah, and to summar true. summarize it, you let it come to you, you learn, and then... That's true. Yeah. Bango. You Clip let the it. inspiration come to you. You Sounds like you don't force anything. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not like a big, have a big idea and execute. Yeah, yeah. Things come through. Yeah. I get and inspired by people at home a lot. Yeah, for sure. And then on the other side, it's, if something doesn't go according to plan, just, well, expect the worst. <laughs> yeah. Just be okay with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. Flow with the goal. Expectations are not your friend. Yeah. In anything. Okay, next question comes from Still Disorder. This person wants to know, how do you manage to be so fearless? I mean, that's... If I was actually fearless, there'd be no point in doing anything, really. Mm -hmm. Like, fear's the... What drives you? <laughs> yeah, fear's the calling. Like, fe like, when I'm afraid of something, I know I'm supposed to do it. I can't not do it once I'm afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Another reason I did the fighting thing. Mm -hmm. It's very vulnerable, very nervous. I don't want to do this. When I went to fight, like fight day, I forgot my mouth guard. I forgot to take my shoes off. I forgot to take my shirt off. I just went blank. The only reason I'd want to do it again is because I would like to go back and try to fight those nerves a little better and stay mentally clear. I don't want to do it again. Mm. Probably not. Like I just don't see myself having the time to dedicate like I did that time. Mm. But... It's that fear that like that, that conquering of a fear. I have some, I wrote this on my wall. What was it? I used to look at it all the time. Yes, I'll bless her. Yeah, it was yes, I'll bless her. <laughs> Fear not. <laughs> Fuck them up. I no care. Easy. <laughs> you know the kind. <laughs> Can. Um, yeah, no, I just think I, I, I wouldn't say I'm fearless. I say that I, when I'm afraid of something, I move towards it. Mm -hmm. You lean into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, and, I've heard a lot of athletes mm -hmm. with that mindset where you lean into the uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. You lean into the fear. It's just, I don't know where it started. It must be something that happened. It's something innate from your childhood. Yeah, that's what I think. I yeah. think something happened where it paid off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. And I, I, now I like that line. Yeah. I think there's always... There's either you're born with it or there's just a moment in life where fear just doesn't become a thing. So fear is always real. Fear is always going to be around. Mm -hmm. But that that thing that stops you from doing it, it just goes away. Mm -hmm. Like For me, like I, I'm going to reference Madagascar again because that's where I lost my fear gene. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not afraid of anything. Except lizards. I'm afraid of lizards. <laughs> Are you really afraid of I'm lizards? I'm afraid of lizards. Yeah. You're from Hawaii. You're afraid of lizards. Yeah. Well, I, I have a good reason. Okay. Story time. Okay. Growing up in Hilo, we uh -huh. have a lot of lizards. Uh -huh. You know? Like and anybody you know, anywhere who lives in Hawaii. <laughs> 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 so only in Hilo, we have a lot of lizards. And uh, Waikeuka. <laughs> Clip it. There's the more lizards than anywhere else in the world. But basically, there's always lizards at our house. And there would always be a lizard in my room. Okay. And then I just always would see it just staring at me and like coming. Like I would legitly go downstairs and sleep in my sister's room if there was a lizard in my room. No way. Yeah. My, like my friends, they all know it. So they just mess with me. Like we went camping down at Pololu Valley uh -huh. on the big island one time. And uh, we were just cruising at the beach. My, my friend, um, I don't know what he did. He, he had this little baby lizard in his hand. And he was like looking in my pocket and like, I don't know what he was doing. And then I guess he went to throw it in and I didn't notice. So then he, he went and grabbed it again and he opened up my pocket and he threw it and I saw it and I just dropped my shorts, just <laughs> ran butt naked back to our tent and just covered myself up. That's wow. how afraid I am of lizards. Like I, w I will jump if there's a lizard around me. That's so interesting. I, just, I always see it and like, I just, I... I have this idea like it's it's gonna crawl on me and like go into my ear and take over my brain. There's no like mo'o stories there? No, no, it's just uh, irrational fear. Okay. 
Um, but I don't. Maybe it's in Omakua. That's why it's always around. Maybe. But okay. And so here, here's it. the thing too. It lives. I talked with Paula Funga about uh-huh. this because she's also Paula's afraid of. It. I think it's like a rac- there, There's like a something phobia. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about lizards, like cockroaches and <laughs> shockling, <laughs> clip it. Clip it. Um, <laughs> the thing with lizards, I can't kill them. Like cockroaches, mm-hmm. ants, like little bugs, flies. You can just smash them, kill them. Uh-huh. I feel nothing. I but, feel nothing. But lizards, like I feel, I can't just smash it. Yeah. I, it feels like too like, much of like a real animal. They're or, cute. Yeah. I mean, I don't. They're, they're like dinosaurs to me. But I just, I can't kill them, and that, mm-hmm. that's like. I have no defense because mm-hmm. my defense on for the other animals or the no other like defense. insects, I just kill it. I smash a cockroach, smash ants, lizards. I'm just I don't know what to do. That's so yeah. funny. What were you doing in Madagascar? I was in the Peace Corps. I was. I was oh, that's what you were doing. In Madagascar. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to go there. We should, we should go. You have a tour guide. <laughs> I speak the language. <laughs> Clip yeah. <it>. yeah. <laughs> that would actually be, be an fun. amazing story. Go to, oh, I bet there's so many stories. Because, coming. you know, it's one of those, like, hidden gems in the world. Mm-hmm. They have the it Avenue of the Baobabs. Beautiful. They have whale sharks. They ha- 90% of their wildlife is endemic. Really? They have lemurs. If you're actually serious, like... I'm, oh, I'm, de- I'm serious. It's one of the hidden wonders of the world. I, I, I think I'll get there at some point. Yeah. I'm not... I'm, I think I'll end up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be super cool. I, I, I plan to go back, so whenever you go... Know. Yeah. And I can just give you all my connections. Yeah. Connections in Madagascar. Connections. Okay. So next question. Wait, did we even answer the question? Fearless. What okay. was the question? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, we did. St- I okay, answered okay, it okay. real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Next question comes from kdk.erawati. Raja. <laughs> how, you, how did you find yourself? When? Any advice? How did you find yourself? Yeah. Like maybe once you were lost, you were petrified. At first, I was afraid. Yeah. <laughs> I paraphrased that. <laughs> I was petrified. You didn't finish it for me. You could have clipped that. <laughs> could have clipped that. <laughs> oh, when did I find myself? Here. I mean, still finding myself, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, when did I get comfortable with myself? <clears throat> I think, um, I don't know. I'm a really big goal setter. Um, like, every year, I would set goals for myself. Like, I, w- I wouldn't do it, like, on New Year's. I'd probably do it like a month after or something. Like it would be on my to-do list. Like I'm going to make, I'm going to realign. I'm going to talk to myself. I'm going to hang on myself. I'm going to realign and see what I want. And I think one of the most powerful years, I, for the first time, didn't set my goals as objectives. Like it wasn't like make this much money, do these things, make this many YouTube videos, post this much on Instagram, da na 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 spend time like I like spend time with family, go on this many camping trips, try these five new things, read a book a month, whatever it is. It wasn't like a physical it was adding values into my life. So I'd wake up for a year I did this. Um, there was a book called rules for a night. I've given it to all my friends, super short little coffee table book. I would, before I I made this like a thing, the reason that I, where I got these, these values, if you, if you want to read this book rules for a night, it's barely reading. It's tiny little passages. They just touch on different things. Um, honesty, discipline, humility, gratitude, um, like each chapter is like labeled like that and it's really short, short read and I'd read it and I would just take, it would take me maybe three to five minutes to read it and I'd just meditate on it for like 30 minutes. Just like think about it. Just really just like, just think about it. Not No real intention with it, but just like try to break it down, read it over and over again. Like just like, what are they saying? Like how would I apply this into my life? Like just think like that. From that book, I probably picked six that really stuck with me. And that year, that was my goal. Every morning, I, would st- I had it written on my wall. I'd stand in front of it, and I would recite it. And I would like, the first one was discipline. Or no, the first one was patience. And I just realized that I, old timers are patient. Guys that don't make a lot of mistakes are patient. Girls that don't make a lot of mistakes, patient. Patience is super important to living a solid life that you're proud of. Um, Another one was gratitude. 
a day reflects a life is what I tell myself. If I can wake up every day and be grateful, that's going to be a good life. Mm -hmm. Like if I can just manage to be grateful every day, hell of a life. Humility. Um, this was sometime, I think, during COVID and it dawned on me how every living thing relies on each other, right? And kindness is like a daily meditation to that. If you're just kind every day, you're meditating on the fact that I need all of this. Like, you, you know, COVID happens and all of a sudden you appreciate the mailman a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like small things. You're like, bro, I can't do anything by uh, myself. Yeah. Or the flights. I can't fly anywhere. My whole job mm -hmm. was international. Oh, I can't make money anymore. I need airlines. I was like, wow, I'm not as independent as I thought. Mm -hmm. um, discipline. It don't, like I really wanted to apply discipline discipline in my life because I realized that was freedom. If you're disciplined, you're free, which is an interesting contradiction, but it's really true. Like if you're disciplined, you have all the time in the world. Like I would I would tell myself, um, what was it? I think it was. A moment of free, like, I don't remember my little saying, but I had this cute little saying for myself. Like but a it was just, mantra. yeah, it was a little mantra, but it's just the idea is like, if you can be disciplined, you're going to live a very free life because you're going to have, everything's going to be on your time and your clock and you're not going to be giving your time and wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Like those days when you're kind of half productive and it takes you 12 hours to do something that you really could have done with four if you just were focused. Mm -hmm. So discipline is something I wanted to add in my life. Um, a huge one for me was uh, honesty. And my idea behind honesty was being yourself, letting yourself be yourself, being true to who you are. Like just those little lies you say, or like to me, this is the perfect small example. When someone's like, you know the kind, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't know the kind. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just kind of faking it. Like Not you don't want to have that awkward, like you don't want to be the guy that doesn't know. Especially in other languages that happen yeah. when you travel. Mm -hmm. They're just like, it, when you're learning the language and they ask if you understand and you just mm -hmm. say yes yeah, or yeah, yeah. si or uh -huh. enya, eka, whatever uh -huh. it is, whatever language, we. Oui. <laughs> and I think it's super minor, but I think that there's a bigger part of that. So to me, it's just like honesty, just always being honest was just me allowing myself to be completely comfortable in who I was yeah. and not hiding anything. Not Because once you hide something about who you are, you're, you're shaming that part mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. So to me, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to try to just be radically honest about who I am. Yeah. That one was huge for me. Um, and the other one was observance. Mm -hmm. Observing how I feel, like when I, when I feel things um, and why. You get a little angry, you get a little jealous. You know, these emotions that usually control. I see so many people have zero control over their emotions. Like it's just zero control they're just on some complete little boy shit mm. of just like brah grow up like just have a little bit of and that was me not too long ago but just like you have to have a little bit of you have to the power of sitting with those things mm. and understanding why you're feeling a certain way and observing i think there's that old saying like which wolf are you feeding mm -hmm. like where is your are you like, you know, feeding into that jealousy, into that anger, you know, or are you feeding into a more positive thing? Mm -hmm. So for me, that was one. But so to answer the guy's question or the girl's question, I forget who asked it. It would be, I sat down and I, I realized that I'm, I kind of viewed myself as a garden. I can weed what I don't like in here, mm -hmm. mentally, spiritually, physically. It's not who I am is who I decide to be. And I can go in and I can weed and I can take things out and I can replant things. And as long as you're down to put in time every day, you're going to have a beautiful flourishing garden. Mm. And it's super possible. It just takes discipline. I would say it's the first thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's a good book. I think finding yourself, it was his more specific question. For me, honesty was that thing. But I think everyone has a different path to finding who they are. But taking, taking that time to be with yourself. Mm -hmm. And you forgot one more thing. Clip it. Clip it. <laughs> Great question. 
Uh, next question comes from Dakota.Roman underscore 21. How did you start your business as an artist and what advice do you have for those trying? So this is more of a business side now. Repeat the question. Clip it. How, <laughs> no, don't clip it yet. <laughs> How did you start business, a uh, business as an artist and what advice do you have for those trying? Mm. A business as an artist, man. That's hard. I'm not gonna lie, that's hard. First define define artist for yourself. Do you really want to be an artist? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get artist and entertainer mixed up. They can be the same thing, but just know that. Just split them up. Artists die broke a lot of the time. Entertainers do not. I think that there's either you have to either learn how to mend those things to be an artist and an entertainer or just be okay with an art being a pure expression of who you are and that it might not be it might not make a lot of money like it might not be a business art is art you can't turn art into a business you can entertain people I would say and I think even like like traditional art like a painting like you are still entertaining people. You are, people are usually buying a painting because it's a painter. There's someone behind it that they're intrigued with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the piece just speaks to them, 100%. But I, I will say that I think define, define what being an artist means to you um, and just work hard and, and, and make sure you're, you're okay with the business side of of being an artist like do you really want to put that out there like because you have to build a brand around it you have to build a brand around your art there's a lot more to it so just i would say understand the difference between artist and entertainer and f try to find a line that you like if you can and just just keep doing what you love though just like that's if you have something that you genuinely love doing you're already winning mm -hmm. if you just keep in <laughs> use social media a lot use social media a lot for sure that's my other that's my other advice do not don't be the guy that's too cool for instagram mm -hmm. i've tried to do that even being an instagrammer it's just not a good look if you're already one and it's don't don't be shamed to like start an Instagram or to have no followers and to be the guy that's like trying really hard on social media. That's running a business right there. Mm -hmm. That's turning your art into a business. That's like bringing that entertainment side into it. Learn how to how to how to entertain people and get people intrigued in who you are and what your art is. I would say. Yeah, and then with that comes adversity mm -hmm. and hardship mm -hmm. and growth. So awesome, great answer. Okay, next question comes from S. Caddy. This person wants to know, how will being an Emmy winner impact the type of films you'll focus on in the future? Um, I just want to clarify, it's a five times Emmy Award winner. Sorry, um, just had to clarify that. Clip it. Yeah, five. Not one, not two, not three, not four, five. <laughs> Let's keep this under your arm. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, okay. I like that. <laughs> um... It's not, sorry, it's not, <laughs> shock lane. It's not going to affect the way I make films being an Emmy winner. I think it'll open a lot of doors. If I'm being completely honest, that means something to me because of the struggle that went behind it. Mm -hmm. Our first episode was Aloha Aina. We got one nomination. We went to the Emmys. We saw how it goes. I got to see one of those. I got to see people winning. Our name got called as a nominee, went to someone else. And I was like, Okay, I want one now. Mm. Like, I want to win. Like, I want to I wanna know what that feels like. I saw when I wanted one. I just did. Um, I, I never touched one. There was one that my mom wanted me to pick up and take a photo with. I was like, Mom, I'm not. Until it's mine, I'm not touching mm -hmm. that thing. Um, I didn't want to know what it felt like until it was mine. Um, so I'm proud of that because of the story to, to get there. With making the Coral Gardeners, that was always the intention to build something. There was a lot of intentions, a lot of intentions, but one of them in the back of my mind, as I was formulating the story, I was trying to do it in a way that would win an Emmy. 
So the fact that we didn't win one, but won five, I was extremely proud of because I was like, it's just a moment. It was struggle. I worked for it. I set my mind to it. I achieved it. Okay, I'm proud of that. I don't think it changes the film at all. Like I think the film, I was proud of the film before. I'm, I'm proud of what we did. I, it's not going to change the stories I try to tell. I am really hoping that it opens doors up with business. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm most excited about. This right here, physically, this is cool. I like it. Thank you. It's the token in my back pocket when I get in a meeting. I'm not. I'm. I'm bringing this around because it's like pretty soon this is gonna shit on my shelf and no one's ever gonna see it. Mm-hmm. So I might as well bring it out a couple of times while it's fresh. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, it's. What's the word? What am I being pretentious? It's pretentious yeah, yeah, enough yeah. as it is. But if a year goes by and I'm still carrying, I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I'm excited about the chip mm-hmm. and having that to play in my meetings, um, having that, throwing that in the conversation when we're trying to pitch a project, it adds validity to what I'm capable of. I've always, it doesn't change the way I see myself or my films, but I can't deny that it changes the way people see me. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that. That's like, I, I really appreciate the Emmys for recognizing or specifically the San Francisco chapter, which is the chapter that Hawaii is part of for, you know, the opportunity for recognizing a hard work and that it's a really good film. And I'm, I'm really hoping that it opens a lot of doors. Awesome. Now that you're an Emmy award winner, you ever thought of like going bigger and better and adding like explosions, like in Transformers Mm -hmm. and like Fast and Furious, like bringing every single celebrity in it and then bringing back people from the dead and then going to outer space and doing super unrealistic things. Was that Oscars? Am I thinking the Oscars? Clip it. <laughs> I was trying to be as straight face as I could. Just like, I feel like you should say all that and it should just be cut back to me. Just <laughs> what is he talking about? Don't clip um, it. Don't clip it. Clip <laughs> it. Uh, I've never, I, uh, one of my, my biggest dreams um, what I would actually like to do with my life. Right now, we're trying to get a travel-based show. Well, I'm doing three things right now. I'm starting a... I've ne- I haven't plugged myself yet. I should have done that right in the beginning. Okay, right now. Terrible marketing. To my artist friend who was talking about how to turn art into <laughs> a business, you you plug yourself in the beginning of the podcast. To plug yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, Captain Potter. Um, I'm about to start a YouTube based series, or at least it's, it's in, it's in the process of becoming a reality, but it's all going to be Hawaii based. So we're going to tell a lot of cultural stories, um, that just, it's just about connecting with people and understanding what it is that they love to do most, what connects them to home the most. Um, it's going to be a super fun series. I'm excited to do that. I'm gonna do that on YouTube. Um, with these with Back to the Wild, what I was, the whole time I built that series, I built it like a resume. I, I haven't catered to my YouTube audience too much. I've more been seeking, learning how to put something on a network. That's always been a goal of mine, to have a network travel TV show. Like Netflix yeah. or Nat Geo. On a, yeah, yeah, network, any of those. Ne- Netflix obviously is the biggest reach. That's been the dream just because like, mm-hmm. mom, turn on Netflix and my <laughs> face is right there. Everyone's got Netflix, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, you know, kind, <laughs> but so that's always been a goal of mine. And that's what I've been trying to do with this back to the wild series is learn how to be, be a networker. What I want to do with this next series is accommodate to a YouTube audience and do something that's just super fun and a lot less time. I want to be able to create a lot more content, be able to tell a lot more stories, do it in a lot more pure, pure, relaxing way, like a lot of production. Right now we're working on an episode about hula. I've been working on that for like over a year. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of these things take a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd like to make something that I can, I can whip out. Um, but my whole Back to the Wild series so far has been, we have things moving forward now. We're putting together a team. We're putting... We're putting together um, some pitches. We're taking things to market, to networks. So that's moving. Um, the other thing that is on the back burner right now, but I have dabbled into it, is script writing. Um, I would love to make movies. Like my end goal, I want to be a director. I want to be a writer. And I want to make movies that change the way people see Hawaii. 
Mm-hmm. We have so many amazing stories here, so many amazing people. No one's telling our stories. I feel like it's a great time to start. I feel like a lot of people are starting. I feel like Jason Momoa guys are doing great things. Um, I think he has a whole production company that's opening up that's all going to be local-based talent. I know nothing about this. I could be totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have some friends that are working on his show that's coming up. Um, You know what I'm talking about? Chief of War. Chief of War. I always call it uh, the King Kamehameha show. (laughs) But it's not even about King Kamehameha. It is, but it's not. Uh, But my friend's going to play King Kamehameha. So that's what I keep saying. Wow. Uh, I don't know if I can even talk about this. Probably, well, but whatever. You, we don't know who your friend is. Yeah, you exactly. You didn't drop any names. Clip it. No, yeah. don't clip it. <laughs> drop um, his name and then clip it. And then clip it. <laughs> Beep it. So it sounds like I said it right here. Yeah, yeah. Beep then it sounds like I said it on the... <laughs> it just sounds cooler. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I want to make movies that celebrate Hawaii. And like you were saying, you brought this up at some point. That was a great point. Um people i don't know if it was guests but you talked briefly about you you wish people came in just ready to learn open book i would like to make movies that i like uh, i'm about to like almost shit on what i just said a little bit but like almost like demand like it doesn't give them an open book it just fully 180s what they already think they know about hawaii because i feel like they have this preconceived notion i just want to completely turn it on their head so that they're like, wait, what is Hawaii? Like, have mm. to we have to redefine what Hawaii is. Mm. I feel like, I mean, Hollywood did that. Hollywood defined what all these things are. They made what a cowboy is. Mm. Cowboy movies are not realistic at all. That is not what being a cowboy was. And 90% of cowboys were black. Like, it's a complete misrepresentation that Hollywood is able to do. We can flip the complete misrepresentation representation we have of Hawaii and make it an actual real representation of that this is a home this is a people this is a uh this isn't just your tourist destination just because you know what I mean so I I would love to tell those stories um that make people see Hawaii differently I love that and not only that because that's so focused on the people coming in because obviously that affects us that affects local people but I would like to make films that local people can be a proud of Mm -hmm. like if i was a kid this is what i always think about all when i was a kid i loved movies and i dreamed about all these faraway places because that's where the movies were Mm -hmm. if i could make a movie just for my kid to watch that would be enough if i could just put into his head how beautiful hawaii is how amazing this place is the history that he's walking around in like if i could put that kind of pride in someone at a young or an old age, that would be worth all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't need none of these. Mm -hmm. If I could just put, instill that in people, like a a sense of pride in Hawaii and a greater understanding, just to, just for a moment, step back and just be like, wow, look at where we are. Mm -hmm. Look at who we are. It's, it's an incredible place. And I always say this, or like I said, it like, um, in Aloha Aina in, in the film I just always have to give credit Hawaii isn't beautiful because it's beautiful Hawaii is beautiful because of our culture and we have a big heavy mix of culture that everyone should be proud of that is contributing but at the root it's Hawaiian mm-hmm. so all the Kanaka out there who are living that should be very proud you are like the core of why we live in the most special place in the world clip that right now i love that clip it beautiful so beautiful mahalo for sharing that last question and then um we'll end the fan question part this comes from uka ukulele dot b i think it was ukulele dot b i think I, i wrote it wrong is there a specific moment you realized you had to do something for our planet a wake up call um Mm. that's an interesting question I feel like (laughs) I feel like growing up in Hawaii you don't have like that big moment I feel like for some people they grow up so disconnected from the 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 world like the natural world like the actual thing that's going on here that we've created these little cities and lives in 
that there's a moment where like oh, I have to do something for the planet. It's just part of life, like here, like growing up. I think also um, Kimmy Warner has a really good thing about this of like growing up on an island, how it's so small that it doesn't allow things to disappear. It doesn't allow things to come in and go with, with this question or ambiguity, mm -hmm. if that's the right word. But you know where your food comes from. You know where your trash goes. You understand just this little circle of life that you have an effect on your place. Mm -hmm. You're never just going to grab rubbish and throw it. I feel like maybe in a city, people are okay with that. They'll flick their cigarette butt on the ground or something, and it's not a big deal. And I could see why it wouldn't feel like a big deal. Like looking around, it's just buildings everywhere and concrete. Mm -hmm. I'd feel so disrespectful. Could you even imagine if you just crinkled this up mm -hmm. and tossed it out your window driving around Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Guy, like I would feel just like the biggest piece of shit ever. I'd be like, wow, I have no respect for Aina or who's coming. Like I just have zero respect for this place because it's so beautiful. Um, and I think... A lot of Hawaiian values teach that at a very young age. Me, being as haole as you can get, mm -hmm. I still grew up hearing like malama aina, malama ike kai. Like you have to take care of this place. Like you just have an, un, you have an understanding that comes with just life. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always felt like, um, I feel like growing up in Hawaii, it really allows you to live out Think global, act local kind of idea. Mm. Like you're just, it's not hard to to think global because we live in a little planet almost. Like you live on a little island. It's its own little world in the Pacific. You have to care for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, you hit all the the nails on its head. There's like a bunch of nails and you just went pop, pop, pop. Zoom in on <laughs> that think, and then clip it. I think you, you covered a lot of good things right, right over there. For me, it comes down to kuleana. Mm -hmm. It's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's this innate feeling that the land, the sea, is our home. Mm -hmm. In your Aloha Aina episode, you, uh, Kaina, mm -hmm. he was talking about kupuna, how mm -hmm. you know we have our kupunas, our elders, our ancestors, these humans. But our kupunas are also the land, the taro, you know, the ocean, the, the things inside, the wind, everything, because they were all here before us. So we, we have to look at it as like how you feel like you're, per, you're a guest in Hawaii. We're a guest on this planet. Mm -hmm, 100%. You know, we're just, we're just visiting mm -hmm. during our 70 to 80 year life expectancy, yep. <laughs> maybe a little higher in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to do what we can to take care of it. And it's not like, it's, it shouldn't feel like a chore, like, oh, I got to take out the rubbish. Mm -hmm. I got to vacuum the floor because mom or dad said so. It's You got to do it because this land and wind and ocean, water, rain, everything has taken care of us for so long. So we have to be stewards of the land and give back. It's kapuna. It's, yeah. You have to mahalo you, kupuna. You have to. You have to malama aina. You have to malama ikikai. You got to malama yourself so you can malama the aina and the kai. You got to do all these things. And it, it's, it shouldn't feel like a chore. It's just, it's just life here. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. I used to have so many kind of quotes just like, because we worked on it. For, you know, <laughs> the, like, the film gets stuck in your head, you have little yeah, things. Yeah. I used to be able to recite that whole film. And whenever <laughs> I, me, me and kind of be working in the low or whatever, and, I, he'd say something, and I'd lean over and just like give him, feed him a coat for the movie. <laughs> so fun. That's fun. But he, so. he's solid, man. He's awesome. a great, great, great guy. Yeah. Hopefully, I get to meet that guy one guy, day. Guy, you should have him on. Yeah, yeah. You could talk story with that guy forever. Yeah. Maybe when I go to Kauai. Yeah. No, honestly, him. before having him on, come over to Kauai. We'll go work the Lo'i, and then Definitely. you'll really get a feel for who he awesome. is. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. Well, mahalo, everybody, for the. Fan questions presented by Shaka T. And remember to be the aloha you wish to see in the world, just like our sponsor, Shaka T. As I say that, Sam is getting another Shaka This is his third one. This is a record on the podcast. Nobody's ever drank three. Yeah, well, I'll give you some to take home. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, mango hibiscus. Yeah, you're go, you're working your your way through all of the flavors. <laughs> all right, so let's we're coming to the back end of the podcast. Uh, oh, I love that sound. That How much sugar's in here? Zero. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Nat- I was just nat- setting them up. <laughs> Sponsor me, hi. I ain't know that guy. Nat- naturally flavored, naturally caffeine free. Oh, naturally, this one's caffeine free. Herbal tea. It putties. Yeah. <laughs> it putties. <laughs> putties odd. Yeah. All right. So. Before we get into all the, you know, cultural stuff, because you brought up about how, you know, you grew up as the Howla kid mm-hmm. and you had to get into fights. Um, I like to ask my guests, what does the term keep it aloha mean to them? What do you mean? What kind of... It's a loaded question right there. Keep it aloha. Well, if I could just steal a little bit from Kaina. Um... I was trying to get to the bottom. What is Aloha Aina? Like that was, that's what the film's called. That was like the, the big question at the end. And, and the way he says it is beautiful, but he's like, it's like when you first hold your, your kid and he compared Aloha Aina to the love of a father for his child. I thought that was the most beautiful answer like I still choke up when I watch that scene sometimes because it's almost like he's having this moment Aloha Aina on YouTube for free to watch one million views (laughs) yeah it just hit one million Mm -hmm. views the fact that that video with that message hit one million I'm sincerely proud of it um but there was so much heart in that response and it was that idea of us breaking down Aloha Aina and how the one, like if you were to, if you were to simply say what it was in English, it'd be love for land. But then you break down what Aina is and, and Aina is the land. Aina is the Kalo. Aina is the wind. Island is the Kapuna. Island, uh, it's me and you. Like it's the people of a place. Like, so you, you take all that. And the fact that he was just just comparing it to a father's love, like told me everything I needed to know about Aloha. Because it's it's not a word. Like what's what was the, keep it aloha? Keep it aloha. How do you keep it aloha? It's just being like it's there's certain. I think people use aloha too loosely. Honestly, I really do. I think that. It's become, it's, I mean, and I'm not hating on it. Like, go ahead, use it loosely. I will continue to use it loosely as well. Because it's, it's a beautiful word. Um, and it represents, like, where we're from and, and what we're trying to be. But there is, there's probably a handful of times where I've really felt aloha. Like, mm-hmm. really. And it's not a word. It's an action. It's a feeling. Like, you can feel it. It's different. Mm-hmm. Aloha is a powerful word. Definitely. Action, not a word. And oh, it's a powerful feeling. Because mm-hmm. I know it's like, let, let me bring you back to Israel Adesanya since he's okay. on your shirt right now. After he won, he knocked out Alex Pereira. He had a speech that w- was super epic. Mm-hmm. How he just wishes that everyone could feel that joy that he felt, you know, mm-hmm. of winning, of being defeated three times by this guy. And then coming back, when with the whole world looking down at you, and then coming out on top and winning, he just wishes that people could feel that excitement, that joy, that happiness. And like that's the same thing with feeling aloha. You know, there's only a few moments in your life where you've really felt aloha. Mm-hmm. You know, and. My wish, which is, is I'm sure the same as yours, is, is for everyone in the world to feel that, like have that moment where you're just mm-hmm. like in Mongolia, in Madagascar, mm-hmm. in Tahiti, where the world is going on, but everything is slowing down. It's just you, the moment, the people around, good food, good music, everyone's getting along and it's unspoken, mm-hmm. but it's just felt. That is like the aloha. That is a happiness that we wish to have in the world. 
That's a great comparison. Clip it. <laughs> that Clip was it. fantastic. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think I would say it's it's that rare. Like mm-hmm. that feeling of a law is one of those grand moments that you'd see on that big stage. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And it's so it's it's is unique. Mm-hmm. It's very unique. And I felt I felt versions of Aloha in other places, but it's different. I feel like it's different. Like I feel like you can only truly feel aloha here. Yeah. From Hawaiians. Yeah. Like it's just it's a different I felt things that I would compare to Aloha. And I'm not gonna say one was better than the other. Mm-hmm. Um maybe Aloha means a little bit more to me because this is my home. Mm-hmm. But I felt like what I would say their version of Aloha was. Um but yeah, I think COVID gave me that too. Mm-hmm. I it's I don't know if this is a politically correct thing to say, but I loved COVID. Like that COVID time. I was moving way too fast. I was going in a bunch of directions with a bunch of things that really didn't mean that much to me. It wasn't easy because I understand that it is a completely different thing for everybody. But for me, for us, it, I felt like it allowed two things to happen for me. One, all of a sudden, Hawaii was what all my uncles and aunties have been telling me I missed out on my whole life. So that was cool. I was like, oh, this is what everyone was talking about. I get to experience this. This is like when you go to the beach. No crowds. <laughs> God. Or even once it was a little bit further into COVID and it's just all tents and everybody's just barbecuing. Mm-hmm. And the beach that used to be filled with just like maybe you would know one or two faces, you know, everybody. You're just walking the beach, shaking hands, grabbing food, grabbing a beer. Like it's like, whoa, this is what everyone was talking about. You go to Koala Town, like... It just all of a sudden Hawaii had that really small town feeling again. Um, and then the other thing is it allowed me to connect to my community. It, I never understood the value of community until COVID hit. Um, and it allowed me to just stay put at home and dive in and have a lot of moments where I felt aloha truly. Um, people man the people here are incredible Mm -hmm. i'm just so grateful to be from here i'm so grateful to be able to spend time like people always ask me like who i look up to names you don't know it's not famous people Mm -hmm. there's just a couple guys here and there on kawaii just doing it right it starts with uncle and auntie (laughs) yeah and i'm just like wow that's the life yeah and they look at like me and everything i'm doing like oh that's life my guy you gotta Mm -hmm. figure it out that's it that's my end goal. Yeah. I am very grateful I get to do all this, but like the the end goal for me is real simple. Barbecue at the beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome that COVID gave that to you. It gave me a bad cough. <laughs> <laughs> COVID gave me a bad cough and a few few weeks in bed. Just once kidding. Or Actually, twice. COVID was super minor for me. I, I'm very blessed. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I felt kind of sick one day. I went to the park through boomerangs by myself i got my ass <laughs> really? at covid once yeah. i forget which one it was but at one point phew, like it wasn't it wasn't very long but it was one day where i was like oh this is a bad day mm. just felt awful yeah yeah but i got it easy <laughs> yeah to everyone who had it bad and the lost people yeah aloha to you aloha to you yeah. uh so going off of that was there ever a time in your life where you haven't felt aloha? Where growing up, you have felt like you were... Oh, okay. Discriminated against? I see where yeah. we're going here. <laughs> or, you know, you just didn't feel like comfortable mm-hmm. in your own skin or even in your own home. Yeah, 100%. Um, 100%. There's so many ways I could go with this. Um, But yeah, just internally, if I was to say, okay, I guess the question was, have I not felt aloha? Uh, Yeah, for sure. I think, I mean, growing up, no matter, there's, everyone's going to have their, their adversities. Um, Mine, definitely my first one was realizing that I was not, welcome in a lot of circles um there was no aloha in a in a lot at a young age and it's not i i 
before I keep going, let me just say I'm not going to condone the way I was, the way I perceived it. It's just a perception, mm -hmm. and there's and there's always other sides to it. But I will say, from my very limited perspective, as a, remember an elementary school kid, I'm getting beat up in the bathroom. Like I, I would go to the bathroom, and I was having guys like just gang up on me and pound me out and like call me fucking Howley and da 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 da. And I don't even know what Howley is because I'm Howley and I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Like I was full North Shore vibes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. he, he's so Howley, he doesn't even know you. Howley. <laughs> that kind. So I was like, okay, like I just didn't understand. All I knew at a young age before you're an emotionally intelligent being and you can break things down, I'm feeling, I've, I'm feeling hate. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because I would say that's the opposite of feeling aloha. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling hate and I don't understand why. I don't understand where it's coming from. Um, I, I, I am understanding what side it's coming from. It's not, it's coming from the people who, who, who have generational ties here. And then all of a sudden I'm feeling very newbie outcast, like, okay. And the, and, and the way I dealt with that was super poorly. Um, I, upon feeling racism, became racist. I, upon feeling racist, <laughs> I, upon feeling racism, became racist. I, I, it was just like this chip on my shoulder that was being passed on from kids who are just my age. I, I know 110%. The kid who was bullying me for being holy didn't actually have a bad, it was his dad or a grandpa or mom or whatever. Like it was, it was the household and he was just being like taught like fucking Holly was just a concept. Mm. And I couldn't understand that. All I, all I understood was I was being like hated on. So his chip that he has on his shoulder that he got from his parents is now on my shoulder as a kid. And I, without knowing it, took that burden on and now I'm putting out the hatred and I was never doing it in um, a bully kind of way. I never became the bully, but what I realized I was doing was I was assuming that people were not going to like me before I gave them the chance to get to know me. So mm -hmm. I would get really like uncomfortable for a long time in, in um, getting into new crowds. Like people would always, even like well into my Instagram career when I had a following and whatnot, people would expect me to be like this really fun, adventurous, loud spoken. And they'd be kind of shocked when I'd get into these big events. And I'd kind of just cruise and do my thing. Um, Cause I was always, I was, I was, I was not putting out Aloha at all. I was putting out kind of this subconscious hate where I was just assuming you weren't going to like me. So I'm not even going to give you the chance. Which I think a lot of people think that, um, what's the word? What's the opposite of humble? Braggadocious. Yeah, people think I'm very braggadocious, which might be true in some, some they might have a point here and there. Arrogant. Arrogant, that's the word. <laughs> um, but I think that a lot of the times they're misconceiving the fact, they think I'm like too cool for them, but really I'm just like, bah, like I just... But recently, I, I like just in, recently as in like the last few years, I've really been able to break that down. So the reason I'd even want to bring that up is I think everyone, I would like to encourage, you know, I also, I understand. Like, you know what else is funny? I'm racist towards Howley's. If you're more Howley than me, I, so I completely get it. If you don't like Hollies, because I also don't like them when they're more Holly than I am. <laughs> like me and my friends will make jokes where like a Holly family will go by and we'll be like, that family's a little white. Like even for me, like that was just, a, they're just a little, There's levels to this. They, they just, we're a little bit, so I get it. Um, but that, so that I think is like the first time that I was not feeling Aloha at home. And what I really needed to learn to do and what I, I'd like to encourage you know, other people to do it says it's a loaded question, mm -hmm. but I, I want to give the right response because I did 
I've learned a lot in this aspect. Mm -hmm. But always give aloha. Like, always. If you give, if you, if you have that chip on your shoulder and you're living in Hawaii and you have a little bit of hate, no matter what, like, color you are, whether you're Haole, Hawaiian, Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese, whatever you are, if you have some sort of chip on your shoulder, get rid of that thing immediately and just start with aloha and watch your whole life change. Watch the people you start bringing into your life. So for me, a, a big part of it was feeling outcasted as a haole. And I would say like, so, so like what, the opposite of haole is gonna be Hawaiian. So for me, damn, I can't really find the words for this one. Mm. Damn, but. I know it's a hard thing to explain. It's like when you're, it's, it's like one of those moments, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know what you mean. Yeah. But for the people listening, they, they might not know what know you what mean. I mean. So that's why you have to find the words to mm -hmm. explain it. I'll but find it. We, it's, a, it's a very fragile mm -hmm. topic and sensitive topic. So I can see your mind working, trying to find the right yeah, word to offend like, anyone. It's something that I've, I've defined for myself, but it's hard to define for others. But like for me, oh, what I guess what I would like to say it's for like the Howler kid, because that's what I can relate to. Always bring aloha, and the real Kanaka are going to recognize that. And if they don't give it back right away, if you keep coming constantly with that, because don't expect to give aloha and then to immediately get it. Some, it needs to be earned sometimes, depending on where you are. But if you keep coming with aloha, the real Hawaiians will recognize that, and they'll give it back. I've never met an, uh, a true Hawaiian who's on, and what I mean by true Hawaiian, someone who's on their path. So like a, like a real person that's just set on their path that give you that energy of like, nope, howly boy. Like they don't have that fucking howly mentality. All they have is aloha for you no matter what. Those people out there. So the other thing I want to say for all the howlers that feel that they're like getting judged or ridiculed or whatever, where are you bringing your aloha? To a bar? Mm -hmm. To pick up chicks? To a surf break that's already too crowded? <laughs> I've never seen anybody get beat up in aloha. You know, you, yeah. you show up to a community work day with aloha, poof, watch how many friends you get. Watch you break down all those walls of what you thought a Hawaiian was and how you thought they viewed you. So from my perspective and what I've been able to do, that's what I can say. Because coming from someone who at one point felt like an outcast and now feels like a member of the community, it all started from within and me putting up those walls first and then kind of breaking them down. Oof. I love it. You're a, lot, you're a lot more Hawaiian than some Hawaiians out there. Just got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I definitely, that's another thing. One, I'm glad I found that. Sorry for the people who listened to that whole thing and had to had to watch my mind go. Oh no, they're just gonna see the clip that we <laughs> <laughs> post on Instagram and what you just said in that little 30 second segment. That's all we need. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I got that. Um, you know the other thing that's funny now because you said you're more Hawaiian than other like other Hawaiians would be. It's that's another that's the the new thing for me is. Um, I now feel like I have the, the Hawaiian wannabe card. It's like you got street cred. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, okay. Like I have street cred, but I also have like, like the hater side of it is like this fucker just wants to be Hawaiian. It's like, oh, well you might be right a little bit. I, I definitely am so proud to be Haole because I feel like I have such a unique perspective mm -hmm. that I get to give other Haoles because I'm, I'm on this side. That's what I am. And so then I can be the best haole I can be. I can show everybody in Hawaii, you can be a good haole. Like it's a, you can be a good version of that. So I'm, I like being able to like kind of carry that flag because I feel like there's a not, not a lot of people carrying that flag. Um, but the one thing I am, I will always be envious of is that Hawaiians actually get to have ancestral ties to this land mm. 
there's there's things that I'll never be able to understand, that I'll just never understand the full beauty and the full power of what they get to feel. So for the Hawaiian listening to this, God, just know how blessed you are to be a Hawaiian in Hawaii with access to your home. So like priced out of paradise. So many Hawaiians have to fight just to get the smallest little piece of what it means to be Hawaiian. Guy, being Hawaiian in Hawaii, that is the biggest superpower in the world, I swear to God. Mm. You can tap. We have another film coming out. I don't know what we're going to call it, but it's going to be about hula. Um, but we got to talk to Kuha'o Zane. And we... Love that family. Just great family. And he said this one thing. It was... There's generational trauma. We can all agree upon that. But if there's generational trauma, then there's the same has to be said that there's generational talent, generational wisdom. You can tap into your place, your kapuna. Like there's, it's, the access is undeniable. And like we were talking about earlier, being unique is a superpower. If you can tap into the uniqueness of being a Hawaiian, how many Hawaiians are on the planet? You know what I mean? So I, 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 I'm very aware that a lot of local kids from, from Hawaii, both Hawaiian, non-Hawaiian, the, um, and, and we, we in, in Mo'orea with Titoan, we were able to talk about this. He felt it too. I feel like from traveling around the Polynesian Triangle a little bit, and other islands, we all had that same mentality as island kids that I think we start off with this idea that we're not good enough, hmm. that we're not, that we don't have greatness within us because we're out in the middle of nowhere and everything's happening far away. That's all the big stuff. No, 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 no. Now, I know what Thompson said. We're in the middle of everywhere. This is the center of everything. So I think that's powerful. And I would love for to see Kiki walk around with that that mana in them, that mm -hmm. understanding that they're special, yeah. that this place isn't setting them up for failure. It's setting them up for success. They just need to learn how to channel into their uniqueness, into their Hawaii or their Hawaiian-ness or their whatever it is. Hawaii is giving you a very unique perspective, way of being, way of living, and you need to learn how to utilize that. Yeah, and I think it comes... From doing something as simple as flipping the way you look at yourself and you look at Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know how we all say mainland. Mm -hmm. You know, the mainland is mm -hmm. California, Washington, Las Vegas, Nevada, Ninth Island. Shout out to them. If we just flip the way we think and look at Hawaii as our mainland, this is, like you said, the center mm -hmm. of everything. The strength comes from here. The knowledge comes from here. Everything that the world needs can come from here, especially Aloha. Mm -hmm. Then this is our mainland. This is our home. And this is where everybody can learn. And we can be the role model and the inspiration to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. even though we're a small chain of islands. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what it is. Yeah. And yeah. that is the series that I'm going to do on YouTube. Like this next year's I'm going to do on Captain Potter YouTube channel. Check them out. Check it out. <laughs> it's going to be all about that right there, what you love just it. said. I love it. Can I, okay, can I, can I pitch something to you? Yeah. Um, so I've always had this idea, okay? Okay. Of, and I thought, you know, maybe I could do it to my, um, I could do it myself or maybe somebody else. I feel like you'll be the perfect one because you love being a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll allow you to steal this idea. It's okay. the greatest okay. idea okay. ever. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to start off with the title, all right? Mm -hmm. Jack of all trades, master of none, Chucks. So basically, you travel around the whole world mm -hmm. just doing all kinds of things, surfing, jumping off things, basically what you, you do. But the whole time, you're just trying to master nunchucks. Uh -huh. And that, that's all. That's so... Guy... I have a series idea written out. I can show it to you. It's called Master of None. Chucks. But it's not Chucks. <laughs> so it's funny because this whole time I was like, wow, he just like fully <laughs> wrote the same page. I'm like, Nunchucks. Oh my God. I'll do it for you. I'll, yeah. I'll, 
How cool would that be? Just put a movie together. The of whole time you just practicing you're, nunchucks, you're just, like Nick Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> just in the middle of nowhere. Or like you're learning how to just create the perfect pizza, and then off to the side, you're just like. Yeah, I, would, I think it's a great tie-in. I think you have. I think you could win an Emmy with that idea. <laughs> don't. I don't want to hold your Emmy again until I can hold my own. <laughs> All yes, right, uh, let's move on. <laughs> All right, so we're we're coming towards the the end of the podcast, and I wish we could talk stories for a, a, a lot longer. Yeah, but we gotta eat it for we sure. Got, we gotta get some drinks with Jordan. Yeah, Jordan he, he, committed. Yeah, he he gotta come with us, and we gotta go carpool and whatnot. Who's but, Joe Rogan's person that he's always talking uh, Jamie? To? Jamie starts with a J. Jordan and Jamie. Yeah, he's he's my Jamie. He's your Jamie. Yeah, he's my Jamie. Um, so where I was going with this, um, can you? Can you just give us a little sneak peek? Because I don't want you to talk about the Coral Gardeners too much because I think it's something you just got to watch. Okay. Because. Plug. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Like, this is not no bias. It's super objective. Like, even if I didn't know you, seeing it just visually on its own, it's like the same thing as like watching Avatar for the first time. Um, the uh, not the last Airbender, but like the blue. Oh, people. I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah. Hell of a compliment. Yeah, no, it's clip it. Just the trailer alone, or just like go to your Instagram and see the the clip. It's so visually stunning, and then you just add the storyline along with it, and then like the other things, like the the part where you're swimming with the humpback whales. Like, what kind of divine intervention, godly, universal matter had to go into making that scene? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but one of the coolest scenes in the whole entire thing. And then at the end, it's just like, you know, you got, you got the super cool visuals throughout like the first half of it. And then you got like heartfelt interviews and education to the second half of it with uh, Tetouan and then the Coral Gardeners and then when he's just talking about, you know, his love for, you know, taking care of mm -hmm. this problem. And I don't want, I don't want to talk, talk anymore because I think you just got to watch your, for yourselves. It's only like 20 something minutes, 22 yeah, 22. minutes. Yeah, 22. Yeah, 22, 30. So just um, tell, tell us like, more so of, of how the filming was and where you got the idea to to do it in the first place. But don't don't spoil too much because mm -hmm. I really want people to go and watch it for themselves. When Tituan first saw that clip, he said, "This clip is gonna change the world." Like that was his like he saw it and he's like, "This is gonna bring so much love for the ocean." So clip it, clip yeah. what you just said because I think that's. Exactly. Yeah. But telling that story was beautiful. Um, Tituan is one of those rare people that you meet that is so inspiring and so driven. And yeah, he, he's so relatable, especially for uh, like us island kids. He's so relatable. Like I, I hope that his joy for his home came across in the film i hope that his childlike enthusiasm for everything came across and i hope it came across that he's just like had an idea everyone told him it wasn't possible and he had like one thing that didn't make this the, the cut he was told it wasn't possible and then he had to go to school for eight years mm. in order to make a difference like that's what all the scientists working on because what what happened with Tituan is he grew up in Tahiti and I have so much respect for him because like us, he had a moment where he saw the reefs start to disappear, to bleach off and die. And he was like, what are we going to do about this? And he was actively looking for a solution and a way to help, which I think a lot of us, I'll just speak for me. When I started first, that came into my mind. I was like, well, that's a big problem. And that's kind of where it ended. When solutions came up, I would try to buy the proper sunscreen or I would not step on the reef or I would do this and that, but I wasn't like actively trying to find a way to solve it. Yeah, like, you just, you were, just weren't contributing. To yeah. It. So, but he's trying to like, how do we fix mm -hmm. this? And I'm like, bruh, that's like a global issue and you're just mm -hmm. down to tackle it. 
because he saw the way it was affecting his home in a negative way and he loved his home so much. Yeah. So he had, he had he was told to go to school. He tried to go to school. He he was heartbroken. He missed Mo'orea so much. He's like, I can't do this. Came home, started a little coral garden in his yard. And he's like, I'm just going to, if corals are dying, I'm going to plant corals. That's what he did. He like lives right on the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, the, another beautiful thing about Tahiti is they have such big um, reefs. Like it's all like east side Oahu where mm-hmm. you have those big reefs that stretch all the way out and it's all protective yeah. so you can live really close to the so he lived right on the water and he would just have his little garden like it was his backyard and he'd have an underwater garden of corals and it just took off like it was this thing that he just kept doing and kept doing and kept doing and used the like understood social media and learned how to market it he 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 he, was, he has a marketer's brain he's very intelligent and he he knows how he now knows how to run a business because he started one. Yeah. And the coolest thing to me, thing that absolutely blew my mind about it, he's he's given thirty like young people our age, island kids, jobs. Imagine, and I know this is what's going to happen with Keep It Law. You are able to create a community where you're creating jobs for. Kids on Oahu that instead of going into the tourism industry like we all have to do and go bus tables or t- teach surf lessons or whatever it is, you provide them an opportunity where they get to come in here and learn from people and talk about Hawaii and what why Hawaii is so special. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's what Titoan was able to do in Mo'orea. So they started this Coral Gardeners where he has 30 employees where he took kids that were fishermen and working in the tourism industry or driving cars or doing this or whatever it was. And now all they do is care for Aina. Mm. That's their full-time job. And they're, they're growing in a way where they're, one, they're doing it, they're, they're surfers and divers and spearfishing. They're doing what they love. They love the ocean. So there's that, but they're also learning more and more about their ocean, about corals, about why corals are so special. I learned about how corals are like life forms. It's not a rock. It's a life. It's a living animal. And they're very intelligent. And in like there's of what they're capable of is incredible. Corals have wars. So if you like, if two corals that are not the same, like of the same coral head, and they touch each other, they'll send out like a billion little whatevers and they'll all fight and have these wars and battle it out. Or if a piece of coral breaks off, it understands that that other piece broke off and if it is able to grow again and they start to like mesh, they understand that they're the same coral. They (laughs) they have the understanding of like, oh, you're part of me, you're part of us. We'll just combine them and become bigger. They're, so they're learning about all these beautiful things about coral. But the film itself, I can't say enough about Tituan. It's one of those people, like, you, you have to watch it. It's a, it's a beautiful adventure. A lot of amazing things happen. But at the root of it, it's just a beautiful story of a very humble kid started with very little mm-hmm. and has created something beautiful that is community that's lifting up his community which mm-hmm. i think in the end like that's my goal yeah. create something beautiful that lifts up my community that's what you're doing that's like that's what we're all trying to do and if you're not trying to do that i suggest that's what you do because that's where like that's i mean it depends on who you are but i found that that is something we're struggling for that is mm-hmm. something worth living for 100 percent, yeah couldn't agree more and the all the sentiments that you talked about in the film that's that's what i felt mm-hmm. i i saw tetuan as this local brada mm-hmm. who just does whatever the local boys do parties and surfs and whatever but then when it comes to business he's so serious he found a way to turn what he loves to his career. Mm-hmm. And how can he not be inspired by that? And like when everybody was talking about him, just saying like who he was, like he will, if you don't believe, he'll make you believe, you know? How powerful and is that? I, at first I was just like, I swear, I see so many local kids in this guy. Mm-hmm. 
they just need a little something to like flip the switch so that they can start becoming leaders mm -hmm. instead of not necessarily followers, but just not having the confidence or ability to create their own path. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what was super inspiring. And it, it showed me the, the future of what Hawaii could be, where like these taro farmers mm -hmm. or anybody in the sustainability Sustaina. <laughs> realm could like, what if we started paying people to do these things mm -hmm. and paying them well, mm -hmm. like prioritizing, Yep, you know, which we should. And then people can stay here. They can do what they love. They can see the importance of what they do. Mm -hmm. And then we can make Hawaii what it used to be back when our kupunas were alive, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, everybody, please, please, please go check out. the. I would honestly even say before you go and leave a review on this podcast, go check out. Check them out. Captain Potter on YouTube because it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Watch Aloha Aina. Yeah. Watch the Coral Gardeners. Um, you're on to something yeah for sure thank you but yeah. I think we're getting better and better at what we do yeah. I have a great team behind me um, I have a great community behind me I'm from a, a, a great place that's given me a good perspective um, I have a lot of people I owe my, my my small successes to and I definitely plan on making them a lot bigger successes um, but I wanted to touch on like one thing you said about you know so many local baras where you're like, oh, you're this close to having it. I wish there was something I could say that was just like, this is what it is. Because with Tituan, and what I, I will say, I think if you could say it, it would be, it's passion and hard work. Be passionate about something and work hard at it. So much easier said than done. But one, you said you wanted me to prepare one piece of advice for people. Yeah, your life hack. You want to drop it right now? Yeah. All right. So Go if I it. had one thing for anybody... It's solitude. Being like, cause, cause there's no, I was trying to think of like something to give people that they can really latch onto. That's going to be different for every person. So what I think everybody really needs to do where I've grown the most, what I've gotten the most from is branching, breaking away from friends, breaking away from Instagram, TV, whatever. For me, it's going camping. I'll go, I have a couple of valleys back home and places back home. I'll pack my bag, got everything I need on my bag, and I'll just walk for like two to four days. And I'll just camp. I got everything I need. I'll set up camp. I'll just walk. And it's those moments where I'm just away from everything that I can just sit with myself. And it doesn't have to be that extreme. Sometimes it's taking 10 minutes in the morning. But it's, it's, I think when you really get to know who you are, which is only doable when you take everything out and just sit with yourself, that's when you unlock your superpowers. That's when you understand how you can contribute. That's when you can find your passion because you've cleaned out your whole mind and you're sitting there with who you are and trying to figure out what's going on. And with that solitude, with that awareness, you can harness, I wish I could just tell you like, do this, this, and this, and you're going to find this, or you're going to achieve that. Just figure out who you are. That's the first step. Really just take time to be with yourself, befriend yourself, understand what you need, what you're looking for, what you like, what you don't like. You think you know until you spend a little time by yourself and you, re and you can, man, you can get lost in some holes down there. You're like, wow, I really have no idea who I am. So I think it's really important to connect with yourself all the time, always be reconnecting. And for people who have never really done it, because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now listening that can relate to me in this. In high school, I was so distant from who I was and scared of who I was and was had so much going on emotionally that I didn't want to deal with. I never sat with myself. I always had music playing or a TV on or was with my friends. I was terrified of being alone. So if you're that, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. You need to separate yourself from everything and get to know who you are. That's when you unlock your superpower. That's when everything starts to click, whether you're at ground zero or you're just missing that one final piece, like those brothers you were talking about, they almost got it. You spend time with who you are and you'll find that. Yes, oh, I'm just smiling the whole time you were talking about that because I, 
you you just explained a lot of what I I went through and what I believe to be true. I feel like this is going to come off very blunt and maybe even mean. A sign of a, a weak person, a weak-minded person is someone that can't be alone. Mm. And maybe it's just because you're scared, like you said. Mm-hmm. But once you learn how to be alone, and you don't even have to love being alone. Mm. Just when you can learn to just kind of be introspective mm-hmm. and like get what you need from being alone, your life changes. Because you know what? my the How I summarize what you said is disconnecting in order to reconnect. Mm-hmm. And that was my whole, one of my biggest things, uh, reasons why I joined the Peace Corps is to get away from technology, social media, all the material greed, all of that. So when you're living in the middle of nowhere, for two years, getting water from a well, you have no Wi-Fi, you're at home just in silence. <laughs> no, yeah. Exactly what you feel when you're in, in the wilderness camping. You, you ask yourself questions, you answer questions that you've had, you, you figure things out and you really find out who you are. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what happened to me. That's why I, I, I can say 100%, I know who I am. I know what I want. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to change that. And I, I, not knowing you, we met one time in Hilo at a concert, which was fun. And you were with that ginger kid that's Yeah, awesome. Markian, yeah. Yeah, he was great. What's his name? Markian. Markian, I yeah. follow him on Instagram yeah, now. Yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. I love his little series. Yeah, it inspires yeah, me awesome. a lot. I was like, oh, that's a great way to do it. He does it. Anyway, that's <laughs> sidetrack. Um but I knew that about you just by watching you through social media. Like I can tell that you've sat with yourself. I can tell that you know who you are. You've done the work. You have awareness of who you are. It's impossible to fake that energy. Either you've put in the time or you haven't. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to tell when people have it and when people have, and you Mm -hmm. definitely have. And it's the only way that you can be sitting in that seat and doing what you're doing and have this production, which again, I'm so proud Mm of. I'm very excited about your guys' future. I love the aloha that's going into it. I love what you're giving to Hawaii and that you're giving a space for people of Hawaii to come and just talk story and to talk about their experiences. I think it's super important for people growing up here. For sure. Yeah, mahalo. And, you know, I'm just going to fire all those nice compliments (laughs) back right to you. Perfect. (laughs) Um, but before we end the podcast, uh, I want to know what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't. You know what's funny is I knew you were gonna ask this question. It's That's so questions. funny. It's one of my favorite questions. I wonder if I subconsciously knew that because I've I've watched your clips <laughs> and stuff before, and I've listened to a couple podcasts. Mm-hmm. You know who I really enjoyed, um, and I actually started taking his class, and it shows how long it's been since I took it because I can't remember his name right now. Hawaiian? Yeah. Uh, Eho Opilimai or Ka'alala? Ka'alala. Ka'alala. Maluhi Estates. Yeah, Maluhi yeah. Estates. Mm-hmm. Killer. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to learn Olelo, take his class. Mm-hmm. I started taking it. I took it for like two. I probably, I still have it. I'm going to get back into it. It's on the back burner right now. Um, but my time learning Olelo from him was so fun. I just had a blast and I loved the way he taught. Um, I really don't have anything that I, if, if I want you to know, it's out there. Mm. If I don't want you to know, it's not. <laughs> so, and there, there's really, I'm really open bookie. Like there's not too many big secrets or too many like things I'm proud of that aren't out there. For sure. Just what, whatever you guys see is what you guys see. And however people see me is what they see. And I'm cool with it. Awesome. All right, so you know when uh, you win an award and then the, you're doing a speech too long and the music starts to play? Yeah. I think Dennis walking Den- in is yeah. like our music starting to play. Yeah. So we got can- to wrap up. <laughs> so uh, last, fast, fave five questions. Just rapid fire answers, okay? Okay. Favorite airplane snack? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I, I actually really like the pretzels. I like eating them with orange juice. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, favorite hobby? Camping. Camping. Or Fav- surfing or diving. Yeah, anything. Anything in that's in Hawaii yeah. and you're out in the mountains or the ocean. Okay, favorite travel destination? <laughs> Come on, what do you mean rapid fire? I'm just, <laughs> Nepal, Mongolia. I like, okay, Argentina. I like anything mm-hmm. that gives you a really big 
Oh, I, I don't have to answer quickly. I just have to, I have to answer fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big landscapes. Mm-hmm. So big that it's quiet. Hawaii, everything's compact and everything's alive. I like when I go places and the mountains are giant mm. and the life is scattered and it's like kind of rugged. So it's like not a lot of life, not a lot of noise. That was something that blew my mind when you get into these big landscapes and like you're in Nepal and there's like Annapurna right here or Annapurna uh, and you're just in silence. Mm. Like you're in... There's a giant mountain and everything's quiet. You're in nature and it's quiet. It doesn't happen here in Hawaii because everything's so alive. Mm-hmm. So there's a peacefulness that I still dream about sometimes. Like, And if there's anything I crave that Hawaii doesn't have, it's that. Mm. Being in a giant landscape so big that it's just quiet. Love it. I love that. Favorite type of food to eat? Home. For any local local food all day. I also really like Korean food. Oof, I love Korean food. But if I had to, if it was like that question, like well, you only get one food, yeah, bruh, like, tr- like modern day Hawaiian food is like a cheat because you get like everything. Everything, auto plate lunch, yeah. mixed plates. <laughs> okay, favorite movie. I'm gonna give you a childhood one because I can't. There's so many to pick from, but just from my childhood, Hook. Oh, nice. Yeah, Pete, like the with Robert Williams. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I also really like Shanghai Nights. Oh, no, wait. Shanghai Noon. Wait, um, with Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Love for that. Uh, Jackie Chan's a legend. Such a legend. <laughs> awesome. Well, mahalo again yeah. for coming on and uh, talking stories. This is really great. We're gonna have to, you know, definitely talk stories more. Well, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna go hang out after this, so yep. we'll be able to talk stories. We more. it. How? What's yeah. our time on that, Jordan? You ready to go get we're a beer? At, uh, I think two thirty, maybe. Oh, that two okay. hour thirty. Yeah. 238. Cool. Yeah. We didn't hit three. We didn't have yeah. a pot of too hot. <laughs> yeah. But so, uh, guy, if I'm calling, hey, I can pot of is, is there anything you want to <laughs> share before we wrap up? If not, just tell us where we can find you. Um, nah, me and Jordan are about to get a beer, baby. <laughs> uh, Captain Potter, Instagram, YouTube. I uh, really think we should mic up Jordan. Just, <laughs> just go add all of his laughs into my jokes so people, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I have an audience here. <laughs> Definitely. Well, super proud of everything that you're doing. I'm excited to see where you go from here. This is only the beginning for you. Thank you. Uh, just want to say mahalo, Sam, for joining us on the Keep It Law podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have a new episode every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka. And remember to always keep it aloha. Yes, sir. <laughs>